The perfect ratio is actually 15, 15, 30. <laughs> yes, I would think that true. Urban Meyer would know about that. Yes, he absolutely. Although he doesn't, he seems like a selfish lover, so he probably just does the 30. Well, 15 grabbing ass. Yeah. 15 denying that you got grabbed 30 ass. 30 apologizing, apologizing for grabbing for ass. For not apologizing. Yeah. On today's part of my take, we have Booger McFarland, great friend of the program, talking college football, talking NFL. We're going to recap Monday Night Football. John Gruden has resigned we talk our college football recap of what it was a crazy weekend in college football we also have a monday reading on a wednesday the big fight of the super fans in kansas city and hot seat cool throne awesome show for you and we're brought to you by our friends at chevy the strongest most advanced silverado ever is here if you're an AWL, you know that Chevy Silverado is the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. And as truck guys, we know this is 100% true. Silverado is strong, advanced, dependable, and hardworking. And now football season is in full swing, so it's time to take your tailgating up a level. Strong football season calls for the strongest, most advanced Silverado. And guess what? The available multi-flex tailgate with six convenient configurations will give you a step up on your tailgate game. There's a primary tailgate, which opens up with a push of a button on the key fob or from inside the truck. The inner gate holds to uh, folds to a larger step Sorry for easily getting in and out of the bed. There's an easy access configuration where the inner gate folds down, allowing you to reach farther into the bed. It can also become a desk, a surface for your tailgating meal. So check it out. It is the best truck in the world to drive and also to tailgate when you are going to a football game. So Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. We love Chevy. So thank you to Chevy. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Today is Wednesday, October 13th. Did anything happen during Monday Night Football? It actually overshadowed the game for the first part. Yeah. And of course, we're talking about Major League Baseball playoffs. Correct. Red Sox team of destiny. I think I think they're they're going deep in Socktober. They're going to the World Series. They have something about them that is going to... I don't know what it is, but Hank is actually right before we started... Uh, taping. No. Wait, oh, I forgot. I'm not allowed to talk about private car. He was looking at the <laughs> schedule and being like, yeah, blah, 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 and being like, when can I go to a World Series game? Yeah, Hank, you should do it. You should. Well, I was just trying to figure out, out I was trying to figure out, you know, who got home field advantage, who won the All-Star game this year, uh, and figure <laughs> out whether or not the Red Sox w- would be playing. Uh, but, yeah, the big story, it was basically, it was our John Lennon-Howard Cosell moment where, mm-hmm. you know, John Lennon gets killed and Howard Cosell announces it over Monday Night Football. Uh, this generation has John Gruden resigning over Monday Night Football because of some emails uh, that it it the phrasing that ESPN used was I had to chuckle a little because they said uh, John Gruden wrote emails that were homophobic, uh, misogynistic, and racist, and also against Roger Goodell, the, the four most persecuted classes in the world: yep. women, uh, minorities, gay people. And the fail son of a senator that gets paid $40 million a year. NFL commissioners, it's a protected class. Yeah. Look it up, big cat. <laughs> like, what? Roger Goodell, when he saw, like, okay, the first email got leaked on Friday. And it was like, uh, wait, we just we just found out that uh, John Gruden sent racist emails. And Goodell's response was like, we will conduct a thorough investigation. He also insulted Roger Goodell and called him gay. Fire that motherfucker yeah. right now. Yeah. Well, no, they. so the the craziest thing with the, the timeline of this is the Raiders had all the emails on Friday. It was very clear that the NFL was basically saying to the, the I almost said Oakland Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, here is what John Gruden has in his emails. You should fire him right now. And if you don't, we'll just release more emails on Monday. They didn't fire him. And then more emails came out on Monday. Yeah, it was going to be waterboarding by bigotry. Yes. The, the, the rate that they were going to leak him out. At. And you do have to wonder who leaked the emails. It's either Roger Goodell or it's somebody in the Washington football team front office. Maybe some bad blood with the whole Jay Gruden, Dan Snyder, Bruce Allen thing, the way that ended. It's like a it's like a house of cards with the dumbest people involved. Oh, no. It's like succession if every character was Greg the Egg. Yes. That's what yes. happens in and around the Washington football team. As a fan ambassador, I can say that because yep. it's about ourselves. You can. Um, but, yeah. I'm shocked I haven't been fired from my position as fan ambassador yet. 
The, I think they. I think you're just Milton from the office. Right? Yeah, your office space. They, they right haven't now. told me. They just we, don't realize that you're still a fan ambassador. I had an idea when I saw these emails come out. Should we get Frank Caliendo back on the show to do a table read? <laughs> He's. A lot of people were were sad for Frank Caliendo, the, uh-huh. the real tragic figure in all of this. And Nathan Peterman. Cool. Yeah, and Nathan Peterman. He's like, come on, guys, can't we forgive and forget? I mean. It was 10 years ago. Keep brewing around, please. Yeah, it also, uh, I mean, it's not really shocking that John Gruden might not be, like, the nicest guy. No. I wasn't like, whoa, Well, how could this be? It makes my little woke John Gruden bit that I pulled out after the Carl, Carl Nassib thing age yes. pretty poorly in retrospect. Very poorly, yes. But uh, now we have interim head coach. We, I think PFT, you and I had the same exact thought at pretty much the exact same time that Mark Davis should be the coach. Give us Mark Davis as the coach of the Raiders. Yes. Why not? Al Davis did it. His dad did it. You know the awesome. You know, at the very least, the thought has occurred to Mark Davis. Like he's looking at a whistle that's on his wall right now. And he's like, I got the whistle right here. I I got got the the white jeans. I got the clipboard. (laughs) I got the haircut for it. I got the sunglasses. Yep. Please, Mark. It would be very disappointing if we didn't get at least one game with him. But you know that there's definitely one resume that's being sent out there right now. Where who? Jeff Fisher. I don't. Oh. Well, there's that. I also don't think Dana Holgerson would turn down an opportunity to live in Las oh, Vegas. That would be pretty That'd fun. That'd be amazing. Although yeah. Houston's rolling right now. Also, the big winner is Urban Meyer because uh, people got off of him for a second. Even though he did have the quote that his goal every every game is to run for 250 yards and pass for 250 yards. Which what's in, wrong with that? It's, in the, good, it's well, a great goal. It's good to have it's a goal. Great goal. It's a good goal. But it's per- happened 33 times in the last 52 years. <laughs> The perfect ratio is actually 15, 15, 30. <laughs> yes, I would think that true. Urban Meyer would know about that. Yes, he absolutely. Although he doesn't, he seems like a selfish lover, so he probably just does the 30. Well, 15 grabbing ass. Yeah. 15 denying that you got grabbed 30 ass. 30 apologizing, apologizing for grabbing for ass. For not apologizing. Yes. Did you guys see the, the Schefter watch Schefter live when he said that uh, he hit for like a clean sweep? Yeah. He well, hit, did you hear this? Yeah. Well, I'll put this in. Had a clean sweep of a fin in which John Gruden had a clean sweep of offending NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, women, gays, <laughs> minorities, all sorts of people. He called it a clean sweep. And, he, and, and Roger Goodell's the first it's name listed. One. It's like, that's the best part about this. Is like they're, they're like, yeah, gays, minorities, Roger Goodell. <laughs> this is so terrible. Yeah, like, Commissioner my, Lives Matter. Roger Goodell cat. getting the first listing on that, on the queen, clean sweep bingo card of John Gruden was. Well, but ESPN is trying to get, you know, they want to be in good grace of the NFL. So they, they, it has been very apparent that's what they're trying to do. You so. wonder how Adam Schefter gets Adam Schefter money. And it's for the little details yes, like that. Making yes. sure that he knows that he's going to be a good boy. Letting everyone know, yeah, please, I'll, I'll do your dance for you, Commissioner. Just I'm, make sure to keep feeding me my treats. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't just put, like, gays, minorities, and women in parentheses. Yeah. It's really kind of so. Or maybe it's a quote, you know, uh, uh, that would be funny if Schefter had done it as a thread. Uh-huh. And like John Gruden has offended Roger Goodell, one of one, one of two, or one of two, two of two, also pretty much every other person on earth. Oh, and also John Gruden in one of the emails forgot to put the accent on Kike Hernandez's name. Yes, yes. So uh, big. Now it, that story, uh, it was actually kind of crazy how it worked out because that story led the first three quarters of Monday Night Football, which was the Colts kicking the shit out of the Ravens. And then when it was like everyone had processed it, the Ravens also processed it, mm-hmm. woke up. Lamar Jackson was absolutely incredible. And the Colts are just – you know what I actually realized last night? Um, I think it's – I think what I hate about Carson Wentz is how he holds his elbows okay. in the pocket. Go on. So he's like – he's very chicken-boned. He's pointy. Like he's doing the chicken dance. And I it bothers me – to no end. I, I'm sure it's like fundamentally, Billy, you can speak to it. Fundamentally, probably pretty good, you know, keeping the ball up, not letting it drop below your waist. But it's it's like this always. He's stiff. He's and got, it bothers me. For for being a pretty athletic guy, he is pretty stiff in the pocket. It bothers Definitely. me a lot. Uh, Lamar Jackson, though, was unstoppable last night. So good. Unstoppable. So here are a couple fun stats about Lamar. Some of the records that he set, because he set like a million uh, 442 passing yards. That's a Baltimore Ravens record. They've got a long history of great quarterbacks mm-hmm. in Baltimore, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the first person in history to throw for 400 yards and four touchdowns while completing 85% of his throws. He completed 86 of his throws, which is the highest all-time for a player who passed for at least 400 yards. And the 86% mark was also the highest among any 
player who has ever attempted at least 40 passes in a game. Damn. Pretty fucking good game. Pretty good game. It is funny you bring up the uh, passing of the Baltimore Ravens. It reminds me of my favorite stat ever when uh, the Ravens won the Super Bowl in the 2000 season. They went five consecutive games without scoring an offensive touchdown. Mm -hmm. And they went two and three in those games, which yep. is equally as crazy. That I mean, it's just you can't. Defense wins it's crazy. championships. It's crazy. But, yes, that was an unbelievable performance by Lamar. Now, I will say the Colts secondary was very banged up. They were kind of the walking wounded, but it doesn't really matter. They The Ravens had that comeback. Um, it, of course, we had another missed kick. They're all synced up. It was yeah. perfect that Rodrigo Blankenship just ended. He, he actually – he did that on purpose for every kicker because then they brought up how many missed kicks were made, and you're like, I don't even remember half of these missed kicks. Huh, I'll just put it all on Mason Crosby. It, well, and of course, we only got an opportunity to see Justin Tucker kick like a 25-yard right. field goal. So we he's really the one. If he starts missing, that then there's an issue. Then you have to look at either Mercury and retrograde or – Look at the balls. Yes. Look at the special K balls. Yes. I, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know how those K balls are stored. I know that they're the ones that they have like their own protocol, right? Yes. So I think they're like yeah, they're they're definitely more inflated, not scuffed up. Yeah, they're not. They're like they're shinier. Yep. Are they being kept in a different facility right now? It's a good question. It's time to take a look at the balls. It's time to look at the K balls. Um, other things, real quick in the NFL that we well, I, I oh. should say Marquise Hollywood Brown. Yes, he's Hollywood. He's Hollywood. He's Hollywood. We, his nickname is back. He's Hollywood yep. Brown. Yep. Until at least Friday, we might take it away for the weekend, keep him motivated. But he's earned he's the right to be Hollywood this week. Yes, he is Hollywood. Hollywood. Uh, Mark Andrews is also Hollywood. Hollywood mm -hmm. Andrews is what I call him. Yep. Um, but yeah, the Ravens, like that was that was a crazy, crazy good performance from Lamar. And the Ravens, I don't know, they're just always consistent. I like they're just consistently always a dangerous team. Mm -hmm. It's I, a very well run franchise. I have one more question about the uh, the John Gruden thing. So do you think Deuce is going to stay around? I know it was reported that he's sticking around. I think so. But can you really? I don't know. Your dad leaves. No, I think you got to stick around. Deuce for is the probably, guys. Deuce is probably the for the one. guy's nutrition. Right. You can't leave. Cares, you can't leave the nutrition behind. He cares too much about their bodies yes. to leave them mid mid season. Imagine the gains that get lost if Deuce leaves. Yeah, that'd be bad. He's got to stick around. I I would definitely bet against the Raiders if Deuce left yes. at this point. I would also love to see Deuce like in a uh, dog shelter, like a NFL version of a dog shelter where someone comes and picks him up because he really yep. is a pit bull on the sidelines. Yeah, I, I would be terrified if I were the interim coach that Deuce would just come in and kill me at some yes. point out of vengeance for his father. It's like Shakespearean. And his dad, John Gruden, was probably like, Deuce, I thought I told you to destroy all those emails. Yeah. And he just had Deuce like smashing computers in he his room. He was deadlifting on top of them. <laughs> yeah. Putting, just... the com putting the computer underneath, lifting up thousands of pounds and then dropping it on the computer. Dropping weights. He's like, yeah, that actually doesn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, um... Uh, all right, so yeah. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say before we get to college football, uh, the Bills, because we we that game was going on during the uh, taping on Sunday night. The Bills are fucking awesome, mm -hmm. and the Chiefs might have some problems, but the Bills are awesome. I Patrick Mahomes. This is now what? I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. I was gonna say Patrick Mahomes. The defense is terrible, but Patrick Mahomes has also not been incredible. Like, he's had incredible moments, but he hasn't been, like, lights out Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Are people starting to sour on him? I'm I'm definitely souring on a big time. I'm not. In fact, no, I know. Yeah. I, I definitely am. I, a lot of people around the league, league circles, are saying the story out of story, Kansas City yeah. is that the Chiefs should trade Patrick Mahomes. Mm. They're saying that a lot of willing partners out there uh, – Washington football team would be one probably but, but that would be interesting. But if I'm a Chiefs fan, man, I'll tell you, I'd, I'd run that guy out of town on a rail. I'd say, see you later, Patrick. No, thank you. By the way, uh, did you see that the Bills credited Mitch Trubisky for running Patrick Mahomes' offense in uh, practices all week? His scout team, Mahomes. He's better than Mahomes. Uh -huh. Yeah. What Gave him say? a look. Uh, I saw PFT had an issue with this earlier, so I want to bring it up because I also was personally offended. Uh, you put out your Big Cats two yep. and three NFL power rankings. Well, uh, so it this went is it. Chiefs one, I'm so San sad. Francisco 49ers two, Steelers three, Seahawks four, uh -huh. Vikings five, uh -huh. Eagles six, uh -huh. Patriots seven, yep. football team eight, Falcons nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a bullshit list. Well, bullshit. get your own list. It's then. bullshit. bullshit. No, yeah. no, I'm arguing with your list. Well, I'm just curious. Defend if, like, your you, list. You know what you were doing it for effect, right? Like, no. you just come clean. We're in the trust what, tree. Who, you said the pay. Actually, I probably the only mistake was I probably should have had Washington football team above the Patriots. You said Agreed. yourself they kind of suck. They barely beat the Texans. They could be four and one right now. Okay, and they they aren't. They're better than the e- they would beat the the Eagles, the Vikings, the Seahawks, and the Steelers I tomorrow, don't know about and probably that. the 49ers. What? Big Cat, Geno Smith is the quarterback exactly. of the Seattle Seahawks. Big Ben is a corpse. So wait, you, you guys we shit on Kirk Cousins sun- every single week. Jalen wait, so Hurts we went isn't from trusted. Sunday night to being like I have to probably admit that the Patriots aren't good to now no, like no, no. they're the I best. Said, team. I was close to possibly admitting it if they had lost, which Got they did it. not. Got it. And. Well, good news is they can they can always uh, climb the list. Or you know what? If they lose again, they'll be two and four. They'll probably be better than some other two and four teams. All right, I just you wanted have, to. I, just, I I think that I saw PFT mention yep. something too. Well, I I had an the, internal there thought. Are, so. Your own list. There are a couple issues with the list. Number one, I think, is the Philadelphia Eagles. Yep. Being they're way overrated on that list, mm-hmm. and There's, I think they're third to last. Yeah. Which, fourth. Fourth to last. Yeah, but they're yeah. ahead of my team. Yep. which I have a problem with, mm-hmm. and then Everyone does. and then obviously the Seattle Seahawks. I think that with Geno Smith, we saw a little bit of Geno magic. I love Geno. I love Geno. Also, I think Russell will eventually come back, and I love Geno. Mm-hmm. So that's where I ranked him. All right. What are you going to do? I guess we'll see. Yeah, that's why they Just play the game. Complain. Yeah, well, that's that's like everyone else. They complain about it. They get very upset about my rankings, and that's fine. Who would? That's be, the whole point of it is to get conversation going. So I appreciate you bringing it up. We just having a conversation. We it, it gets the it gets the debate raging on a Tuesday when I only and and for some people asking like where does this team the the rankings are just for teams that are below five hundred. Maybe I'll add five hundred later on in the year. But it's a shine. It's a shine for the teams that suck. I think that if the Giants had beaten the Washington Football Team and they were two and three on the year, you would have the Giants way higher. You love the Giants. Well, that's my that's my you, argument. Is I'm making up. Yeah, a you hate the Giants. I, no, I don't hate them. I'm making you, up a are, hypothetical yeah, scenario. Yeah, I, where, I I have said that I I have a problem with Daniel Jones that I keep buying in. Yeah, you hate the Giants and won't admit that you hate the Giants. No, I love the Giants. Exactly. That's a that's a false. That's I, false. I love the Giants. That is very false. I bet, I'm honest I bet, about my I bet bias. The, I bet on the Giants. I am honest about my bias that Daniel Jones fucks me up, and I think that like he could actually be good, even though he's probably not. You should be biased about the fact that you don't like the Giants. I love the Giants. That makes no sense. Why? Because you don't. I love the Giants. Okay. I absolutely I, I think that the Giants are a perfectly fine football team. Um, if the Giants had beat the Washington football team, yeah, they probably... Well, I mean, we can't play ifs. And, I mean, we gotta, we got to play the schedule. You all, you're the two almost and three. admitted it. It's the two and three schedules. It's two and three rankings. Very biased. It's sad. Uh, those are actually completely unbiased. It's a computer ranking, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can make your own, but you can't... You can't argue with it. It's gonna have to get above five hundred. I love that it made both of you mad because that's the point of the the. the oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I know. It. It's yeah, no, crazy. Yeah. You just think, get who can I get fired up? Mm-hmm. I wish you would. You know, I just. <laughs> he did it really well too because he knew that he couldn't put our two teams very last. He no, knew that he had Falcons. to throw us a bone and put the Falcons. The Falcons. Yeah, but Big Cat absolutely Falcons. knew what he was doing. He was like, "I'm putting get the, better teams, the Patriots, and the football team." Mm-hmm. Hey, at the, above five hundred over blowers. here, what do you want me to do? Except that we got to play the Packers. Whatever. Uh, all right, let's talk some college football. Um, all right, so chaos on Saturday. That Texas Oklahoma game. I'm still, I still don't really understand how Oklahoma covered that spread. And uh, Caleb Williams is like Oklahoma is so unfair that they have a backup who is better than their starter, who's now going to be like the best quarterback in all of college football, and they're like, oh, yeah, let's just put this guy in. Now we're in rumor swirling central, though, because you can tell that things are starting to get – they're starting to bubble a little bit under the scenes when the DMs start to fill up with obviously fake scoops from people who are on campus in yes. Oklahoma being like, Spencer Rattler just quit. Spencer Rattler just threw a water cooler against the wall. Spencer Rattler just drove away 100 miles an hour in his Corvette from practice, and then the – His the, NIL deal. The team has been informed that he is banned from the facility. Like, all, all these fake rumors, yeah, they're not true, any of them. Mm-hmm. But there's smoke. I count that as smoke. No, there's definitely smoke. I mean, we talk about it with Booger in a second, but like there, it is very hard now for a program to keep two good quarterbacks on the roster for a long, like for a period of time, because you can transfer right away, and guys want to play, and and you see it all across college football. I did you guys see the Texas? I bullied them into tweeting. That was incredible. That they so Texas tweeted when it was a tie game, forty-eight, forty-eight. Texas football did. 
they did not tweet a single thing for two straight days. It was like the person in the account actually died, which I appreciate. Like, I want my account to be a super fan like that. Uh, I wish they had gone all the way to kickoff of the next game mm -hmm. to then just tweet, we're off and running in Austin, you know, Texas versus, I think, I can't even know, I, who are they playing? Iowa State, maybe? Um but I, I was like, hey, Texas hasn't tweeted yet. I'm putting on alerts. Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. And then they tweeted right away. But I, I really do think an account, like instead of putting out the sad final, start just going going dark, disappearing. There's no rule that says that you have to tweet out, hey, we just lost. Yeah. It's not in there. I do wish that Apple would, would make an emoji for horns down. I yeah. feel like we're, although that, you know what that would be? That would be like warning this conversation can get intense. Yes. Yes. Once John some, Clayton. Once yes. anybody tweets that out. So I, I would like to see that make its way into the ranks of the emojis. As far as uh, Texas goes, I feel like this was a statement loss for him, though. They should, Texas should have won this game. Well, they, they were, the first three quarters of the game were like, I know we joke. But that was Texas being back. Yeah. Like, Sark is incredible. They were running all over the place. That that was Texas back. Yeah, Texas was back, and then they took Spencer Rattler out. Who, by the way, if Spencer Rattler does transfer somewhere, he can't transfer to Washington, Oregon. He can't transfer to Michigan. He can't transfer to any school like that. You have to use the name that you have. Yeah. You have to stay, hopefully, in the Big 12 somewhere. Yes, yes. Maybe Texas a Tech. Ari yeah, Texas Tech yeah, would be would perfect be awesome. for Spencer Arizona Rattler. would be good. Arizona, Arizona State. Yep. That would work. Go somewhere cool. Use the name. Yes, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so that game was chaos. And then, obviously, you had Iowa, Penn State, which I – Iowa football – is so glorious in like who they are and in there i mean iowa and, and wisconsin kind of not this year obviously but are very mirror image of who they are and they know what they do and they know what they do well iowa i don't think i've ever seen this before iowa wins that game they kneeled the ball and weren't able to run out the clock they kneeled the ball just so they could punt one more time. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that. They didn't try to get a first down. They kneeled. They went victory formation for a one final punt. Their punter is incredible. They run the ball. They play defense. They punt. Yeah. That's what they do, and they're the number two team in the country. And guess what? If that makes you sick that I was the number two team in the country, they're going to probably be the number two team in the country for the next month and a half until they get to Indianapolis against Ohio State or Michigan or Michigan State or Penn State. Look, I threw them all in there. Do something about it if you yeah. don't like it. So Iowa is the first football team that I've ever watched where I can't take my eyes off the center. Yeah, no, he's Their incredible. Their center kicks so much He's going to be a first-round pick. Tyler Linderbaum. I'm yeah. giving you that name right now, and if you've watched any college football, you've probably known about him for a long time. Stanford Steve has a borderline, like, I'm going to call the cops relationship with this guy. Yeah. Like, he's so obsessed with Cole him. Cole Kubelik, too. He's got, like, videos playing above his fireplace of this guy all the time. Also, shout Tyler out Linderbaum. Shout out Safer Steve real quick. If you're looking for a PS5, uh, hit up his Instagram. Oh, he let me know that he's got, he's, got, some sneakers. he's got shoes that he can send me. <laughs> he got I, hacked. I, he I got hacked. It. Oh, you did? You did yeah. hack? Okay. Sorry, but if you need a PS5, he's been posting nonstop about how he's got PS5s for 450. He uh, he DM'd me on Sunday from his account. Let me do a dramatic reading. My peoples, yeah, wanted to ask, would you be you interested in being a model slash brand ambassador for blank 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 in exchange for shoes? I texted him. I was, I was like, like hey, possibly. I was yeah. like, hey, I think he got hacked. Oh, you were like, yes, free shoes. But if the Whoa. shoes are real, I'll take them. Yes. Yeah. Um, Peoples. That would be great if the shoes were real. Hey, peoples. Uh, but but, but yeah, Tyler this. Linderbaum. This dude, he's going to be first round pick. I I would take him as high as it gets. Like this, I'm in love yes, with watching. He's awesome. I've never seen a center play where you can't take your eyes off him for the duration of the game, and it helps that Iowa runs Iowa's offense. Correct. So he's in the mix a lot, you know. Correct. But this dude just murders people. He yes. he destroys people. He's like he just smashes everyone, and then their fullback is also he's also a bomb. Yeah. He's a pot of bomb. Yeah. So they've got pot of bomb and Linder bomb, and those two guys just go out there and they destroy people. It's great. I mean, Iowa football is what it is, and this is like this is this is the apex of Iowa football. It's, just, it's similar to 2015 when they went undefeated and lost to Michigan State in the uh, Big Ten championship game. But I, yeah, I was really really good team. I people will be mad about it because they're not their offense is not great. 
Is a uh, good comparison to like Virginia basketball, like ugly, but they get it done. Yeah, although I don't think like it. Speaking, maybe Iowa fans will feel differently, but like speaking as uh, again like the the sister school or like the you know the twin of Iowa football in Wisconsin, it, it will never will never win a national title because there's a right. there's a level That's what they that said you, about Virginia. No, I think Virginia though was still like they were number one in the country for yeah they were one seeds yeah and win. they were like actually killing teams. I yeah. just don't know if that can ever translate when you play against an Alabama or Georgia. like if it, Georgia and play, plays Iowa right now. I don't know if I I don't they wouldn't score. They would score because they'd probably get a pick six because they always do. Um, but it wouldn't be more than seven to ten points. Yeah, I. Iowa also is – it's unfair to compare them to UVA because UVA basketball doesn't really mean anywhere in the universe. Of, like when you compare UVA to Charlottesville or UVA to Virginia compared with Iowa football to Iowa, the state of Iowa, like that's – it's night and day. So yeah. like I, the tradition of football, college football in Iowa is, is way, way bigger than the college basketball tradition is in and, Virginia. And you know what? Penn State, like, they, they're they still a good team. That was unfortunate because I do think they win that game if they don't lose their starting quarterback, Sean Clifford. Because there was there's times when you could say, oh, we lost the starting quarterback. We would have won the game uh, if that didn't happen. And you can be like, no, nah, man, like, Iowa was going to steamroll you anyway. Eventually, like, they were going to get it going. That one you can definitely point to the quarterback considering the fact they had, like, missed snaps, like, false starts, mm -hmm. th passes that were just to no one. So, but guess what? Don't apologize, Iowa. Don't no. apologize. Do not apologize because it seems like a dream season in the making. Do not apologize. I also am going to try to get a bet on the Barstool Sportsbook app total punts uh, between Iowa and Wisconsin when they play in two weeks. I love it. You know what? I'll be like, I, uh, like, I don't know if you can set that line high enough can we do a bet like how they do the prop for the national anthem how long it's going to be how long the wave to the kids is i love the wave yes. to the kids in the in the children's hospital that overlooks the field in iowa i actually like i'm gonna admit it i pulled a dan campbell on saturday yeah i, you I cried I teared up it was you cried i did it's a beautiful drunk it's a beautiful thing i was buzzed yeah. it's a beautiful <laughs> i mean i just come on it's i just Tony watched, soprano watching commercials i had watched the red river i almost said the s word nope can't the say red it. river rivalry yep uh and so yeah i was a little bit buzzed but a little bit buzzed off football too it it makes you feel all the emotions yeah you're no, happy it's great. And you're sad at the same time but then you're happy again it's just a nice thing i like iowa football a lot especially this year i hope that i hope iowa gets into the playoff picture well, yeah. they're in the playoff well, picture. Well, I'm saying like at the end of the season. I hope yeah. that I well, hope no, they have a one game that they got to win. The the rest of their schedule, they they I are want... favored in the rest of their schedule. I do think Wisconsin, at Wisconsin will be like they can't have a bad game and at Nebraska they can't have a bad game. Those are the two two teams where they're better than the uh, the opponent, but if they have a bad day, like I could see Wisconsin winning if they have a bad day Nebraska. Have we got an update on the quarterback for Penn State? Uh, I do not know. I do not know. It was it was one of those weird injuries where you couldn't really tell exactly what yes. part of his body was broken afterwards. And, and Penn State still has everything in front of them. Penn State's if they still really win, good. They, and the best part about the Big Ten this year is there's a five-week stretch where all those teams from the East play each other. So <clears throat> it starts with Penn State plays at Ohio State the same weekend. Michigan plays Michigan State. Then they rotate, and it ends with – Penn State at Michigan State and Ohio State at mm -hmm. Michigan. So they, it will all get figured out. We also had Alabama obviously lose the biggest story of the day. Um, that was so 80 straight wins as double-digit favorites under Saban. Obviously, everyone saw the stat 24-0 and against uh, former assistants. And then the other crazy stat was uh, Alabama had won 100 straight uh, games against unranked opponents dating all the way back to Nick Saban's first year when they lost to University of Louisiana Monroe. And one of his former disciples finally beat him. Yeah, 24 0. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah, so it was 24 0. Now it's 24 0. 24 and 1. Jimbo Fisher's the one. And then uh, he said before the season that they were, he predicted it. Yeah. Although, how many times has a coach predicted, like, this is the year that I'm going to beat Nick Saban and then it doesn't happen? It's perfect because this is just enough for Jimbo to get the LSU job or an extension again. Yeah. One or a, the other. Get another well, extension. Well, use one for the other or, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. One will. will the, <laughs> He'll either flirt with LSU and get that extension, or he'll uh, flirt with the extension to get the LSU. I, I think job. we all learned a very valuable lesson this week, and that's just don't talk about how weird a place Texas A&M is, because then they swarm uh -huh. like hornets. 
we all know that Texas A&M is a very unusual place. It's like a cult it's in the middle of nowhere. Bizarre. It's very strange. Very scary. And that viral of the yell leader or the the viral video of the yell leaders went around, and so everybody was roasting Texas A&M going into this game. They circled the wagons on us yeah. big time. So let's all just agree to not talk about Leave how it alone. weird of a place Texas A&M is. I'd agree. I'd agree. Um, was it was a crazy, crazy night. Zach Calzada, the Cuban Missile, which I love that nickname. The video of the kicker's it. family reacting awesome. was great. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That was great. Um, and then, you know, Michigan obviously beat Nebraska, which was uh, a big win because it felt like Jim Harbaugh needed one of those, like, big road night Big Ten games. Uh, Houston won might last be Thursday. Houston's starting to roll. Actually, that that would be my last point. So Houston, if you're Cincinnati in our Kirk Herb Street bet, which is a reminder, I actually still like our side. Ah, uh, I, I do. Don't know. I, I got. I started to get a little bit nervous for the first time. But remember what the details are. What are it the has details? To, it has to be Cincinnati will get into the college football playoff over a one loss Power Five team. So one loss. It can't be two losses. Two losses, it's it's void. Okay, so let's basically just bam Ohio State or Penn State at this point. Or well, no. Or or if Georgia if one loses those one, yeah, right now, right now. If Bama beats Georgia in the SEC championship game, guess what? They're both going in. And if Georgia beats Bama, they're probably both still going in. What about Michigan? Michigan, no. Oklahoma, Oregon. I hey, I don't know. If this you can is put how the, in. I this don't is know. how it works, though. It's all rigged know. for the Power Fives. If Georgia that beats be Alabama tough. in a in a, a SEC championship game that goes down to the wire, and Georgia's undefeated and Alabama has two losses, I I I would feel a lot more confident on my side than Cincinnati's. What about okay? Let's let's fast forward a couple weeks here, Cincinnati. If they if they stay undefeated at this point, their biggest test you have are SMU and at Navy. Okay, so and then Houston in the AAC championship game if Houston keeps winning. Okay, so they're gonna stay undefeated. I actually think that Oklahoma. I think that they're frauds, but in maybe they're the, they might be the best frauds of all time. They might just continue to win these games that they should lose. Well, the, the they're the they're frauds, but Caleb Williams might fix it all. They do have a tough road because they have to go to at Baylor and at Oklahoma State. Bedlam is gonna be sick this year. Actually, gonna suck, but yes. Why? Oklahoma State is all defense now. They don't have any offense. I bedlam. Weird shit happens. Yeah, but they're they. It's not a, a traditional Oklahoma State team. Weird Their shit happens. Is actually, very good. Weird shit happens in Stillwater at night. Yeah, but it's not going to be like a. I, I would still back and forth points I, everywhere. I would still rather have our side in this bet, um, but I'm I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. And I'm don't don't confuse it. I think it's bullshit. I think Cincinnati, if they go undefeated, should be in. Mm-hmm. That's not the bet. The bet. I'm not saying that Cincinnati isn't deserving. They are absolutely deserving. I just know how the college football playoff works and the bias that happens. Uh, Billy, who can Georgia lose to? You think? Uh, well, they play Kentucky this weekend. If Kentucky, that's the game, if Kentucky no. beats them, then they're think out. That's if, the Kentu- game? if Kentucky beats them, Kentucky will go to the SEC championship game. And, and then if Kentucky <laughs> beats Alabama. In, in the, the SEC, SEC championship, championship, then game. Alabama and Kentucky are getting yes. Uh, Florida, works. Florida in two weeks against in Jacksonville, but it's Georgia is the one sure thing right now, and of course that means it probably won't happen. But they are the one sure thing if you're looking across the whole landscape. Um, all right, should we do some hot seat cool throne? You got something else, Billy? You got someone else? I'm just trying to think of any situation where Coastal gets involved. No, 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 no. no. I just realized Georgia's only given up. Yeah, thirty-three points. They've given up games. one one touchdown, one offensive touchdown against a first-team offense. That's they gave up a crazy. touchdown to South Carolina in 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 garbage time. This never happens. Thirty-three yeah, no. points. I again, I think that they. I want to see them play against an explosive offense, but they're obviously incredible. Um, wow. All right, hot, uh, hot seat, cool throne is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Coors Light, what do you like when you need a moment to uh, chill? Well, I like to crack open a Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. We need to hit reset. Just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. So when you want to sit on the couch, maybe get away from the rat race, maybe go to the bar with your friends, watch some football on the weekend, that's when a Coors Light is the best. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit the reset, reach for beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com 
slash take coorslight.com slash take celebrate responsibly Coors Brewing Company Golden Colorado Hank my hot seat is Ben Simmons oh okay. yes talk about Sunday scaries oh yes I would say that that doesn't even begin to describe what's going on with Ben Simmons he tried to hold out he tried to force <laughs> his way out of Philadelphia said he's not coming back you know got Rich Paul on the on the case got Rich Paul is just such a cool name for an agent didn't do anything. They said they were in negotiations, yada, yada, yada. And then yesterday, uh, Woj reported that Sixers has a ro- Sixers all-star Ben Simmons has arrived in Philadelphia, took a COVID-19 test as required by NBA protocol. Source tell ESPN, meaning he's, he's ready to come back, uh, start playing preseason games and stuff. Awkward. Later on, Woj reported again that the Sixers were unaware Simmons was flying into Philly today. The organization was in constant contact with Rich Paul, but Simmons simply showed up at the arena to take his COVID test prior to the Sixers' Nets tip, and that's when team officials knew he was in town. So he went Awkward. he went rogue, even though his agent, he was also talking to his agent, decided it was time to come back. Turns out the strategy of uh, being like a team's least valuable player and also its most high-paid player uh-huh. and threatening to withhold your services isn't exactly the leverage that he thought it would be. It's incredible. It just, I mean, it doesn't, someone should just sit Ben Simmons down and be like, dude, when everyone else holds out or demands a trade, that's because they're really, really good and everyone's really, really bad around them. This is the opposite. Yeah, You're the bad one. I think his strategy was just that he's seen other players hold out before and he was like, I want to do that. Right. Either that or maybe it was just this strategy is so dumb and unusual and totally backwards that maybe it'll confuse them someone will, too. Someone will just be like, okay, fine. It's the the duck season, rabbit season yeah. with Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. Yes. That's what he was trying to pull. Backfired on him big time. Big time. I love going to, you know, a good a good boo fest, like when the Patriots win the Super Bowl and Goodell comes to give the trophies. Well going to the Sixers first game, like I might have to figure out but, uh, talk to Tick Pick and get out there. Cause but Philly fans won't boo him. They'll be booing Hank. <laughs> It's, it's gonna so be perfect amazing. that it's Philly. It's gonna be Because, like, amazing. if this had happened in Miami, no offense, Jake, uh, or, or I don't know, Phoenix, no offense, Phoenix, Sacramento, probably would have been like, you know what? This guy's good. We're going to, he's, he's, he's better than, like, what we usually have. So let's welcome him back. Philly, Philly's going to roast him. Because they had to defend him. Yes. And then once he was like, I'm out, they're like, all right, you know what? Fuck you, Ben Simmons. Fuck you. I and then love now it. it's like the classic thing where it's like your girlfriend's dating a girl for a long time. You don't like her. They break up and you're like, yeah, she was a total bitch. And then like two weeks later, he's like, yeah, we're back together. Yep. And you Said have to that. be like, yep. uh. Yep. I always like That's her. great. Yeah, yep. good for you. I always Happy for you guys. Hank, do you think that you're more popular in Philadelphia than Ben Simmons is? Likeability rating. Yes. yes. Huge yes. comparison. Definitely. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah? Yes. Do you yes. think he's getting bad? Like, are his, are his DMs worse than your DMs from Philly people? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. You should be. The right thing to do would be for you to I'm, go. I to think Philly. I'm going to show up in a Ben Simmons Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Take, be a human shield for him. Uh, and your cool throne? On uh, my cool throne is these uh, part of my take flags. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> Do you guys see these? Yeah, these yeah those are, are cool. real nice. Hear about these? Hear what about, about the hats? Are the hats out? Uh, the hats, I don't know if they're out. These hats are one of the best hats we've made. We have a bunch of them. Big hats wearing a different one. Uh, we have some goldfish hats. Some sick merch, though. The flags are definitely going to be on sale when you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a bunch of different colors. So, you know, tailgate, man cave, put it on your car, hang it in your front yard. Don't put it on your windshield of your car. Don't put it on your windshield, but maybe, you know. Who, who knows? Maybe on the back. Yeah. Uh, you know what those flags look sick? When you put them, like, on a balcony, over, like, outside your house. Yeah. Upstairs balcony, you drape the flag over, mm-hmm. especially if you have, just like, let a, everyone know. if you got a cabin or a beach house. Do you want, do you want to pull chicks over. just, like, right above your bed? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you walk, girl walks in. A, Say like, less. Yes. Well, can you yes. make? That's can, what she says when she walks in. Can you yeah. make a? That's all part of my take. Oh shit. Say less. Can you make a, re- a reflective flag? Like make a mirror out of a flag. That'd be sick. Oh, you're saying a mirror. a, so mirror, a mirror above your bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With a flag. Because he's getting freaky. I'm just. Well, I'm try- trying. to get freaky. It's kind of like Big Cat's gift shirt idea. It does the material exist to turn a flag into also a mirror? Think about it. Science. Get back to me. Uh, it would be funny if they if you like bring a chick back and, and the flag's there and they're like, Do you think Billy's podcasting voice sucks too? <laughs> like that's the conversation. That person really hurt Billy's feelings. He's been down and out since then. Well actually no, that was more the Dave and Buster's video that's coming out. That's what put him in Wait, Billy, didn't, didn't they like my voice? Oh they did, did they? 
It was me. Yeah. Oh, shit. They didn't shit. like Hank, yeah. So you've been more down and out about the Dave and Busters thing that's coming out. It's where nerd games. Where Jake just beat you on everything. Billy, before we started I, taping, was suggesting that maybe we have him and Jake do some more competitions. Yeah, I, He's already angling for I, rematches. I hope we never put out this video just so I can keep referencing it. <laughs> it was a fun time. <laughs> you, I'll, you, I'll tell you. You, you. you almost killed yourself jumping out of a cap. Okay. It was uh, a stunt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing. Drop and roll. I want to be a stunt man. PFT, your hot seat, cool throne. Yeah, uh, my hot seat is the Houston Astros. Mm. Hot, the Astros are back on the hot seat because you'll never guess this, Big Cat, but they're being accused of cheating in the playoffs. Ah, uh, but Dusty Baker is now in charge, so Dusty Baker is not going to sit idly by and let Tony Larusa declare him a cheater. Correct. Uh, he said these are heavy accusations when you make these about the Houston Astros. Uh, and if you look at the stats, he says that the White Sox have the same runs, OPS, and everything as we have. Well, actually, bet we're better on the road than we are at home. And I think they're actually better at home than they are on the road. So Dusty pulled an old-school move, which is just flipping it yep. on him and being like, you're saying we're cheating? Actually, you're cheating. You're the cheaters. You're the one who's cheating. And before I came to the ballpark, I was listening to Eric Clapton, and he had a song, Before You Accuse Me, Take a Look at Yourself. You know what I mean? That's all I got to say. I doubt that Dusty was actually listening to Eric Clapton that morning. It's right. more of a rhetorical device to be like, instead of me saying it, I'll invoke the name of someone more famous yes. who has said Eric it. Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton in this case. And so he's pointing all the fingers back at Tony LaRusso. This is just leading us closer and closer to hopefully an on-field incident between Dusty Baker and Tony LaRusso oh. where they duke it out like men. Uh, Eric Clapton, John Gruden's favorite guitarist. Fact. Yes. Uh, well. What's that, Billy? John Gruden also likes black flags. No quarter. Did you yeah, say? Did you mean, did you mean to put the L in that last word? No. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh wow. Uh. I'm actually very confused right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you watched yourself into that one. <laughs> you listen to this back. Yeah, you're gonna write. You, you're gonna get it in do a, a minute. Do a It's gonna suck yeah. when you figure it out. Fuck. Okay. Uh, my cool <laughs> throne is being golf tough. Being golf tough is on the cool throne. Okay. Because uh, J.R. Smith, everyone's favorite collegiate golfer, uh, was competing in an event today, and he stepped on a beehive while he was playing. The bees attacked him. They oh, swarmed no. him. He got stung all over his legs. Uh, there were yellow jackets, allegedly. But J.R. Smith is golf tough, and he continued his round, had a couple, I think a, a, maybe a birdie, a lot of pars, a couple bogeys mixed it in, but still was able to compete and finish. Uh, it could have been a tragedy, but J.R. Smith, fortunately, is an all-around great athlete. So, golfers, congrats. You are tough. You are yes. tough now that J.R. Smith is one of you. Golf hardos on the internet are the, probably the biggest group of hardos, and there's people being like, oh, J.R. Smith sucks because he's like 18 over, and it's like he is playing D1 golf. And it's his – he's, he's played, never played. He's playing, yeah, 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 for like – he's taking it serious for the first time like ever. And he got stung by bees. Wait, he shot a 90? Like, That's incredible. That's really good for like Hank and I, but like I feel like D1 golfers. Oh, you're a golf ardo. What do you mean? Yeah, you just did that. You just did what Hank was saying. It was I think it was like 83 78 in like his first two rounds, but it was like that's eight, incredible. Eight, it was 18 78? over over the course. Yeah, oh. that's what I'm saying. Like That's incredible. It's good golf great. scores. I'll take a 90. Yeah, but you're saying that that's terrible for It wasn't a 90. It was better than a 90. It was, it was better. Yeah, yeah, yeah it probably. I, is I think bad. Hank just invented the 90. Uh, Cause I'm pretty no, sure that no, I can. said 90. Well, oh. he said 18 over, so I said 90. 18 but over, over the course the of the tournament. Two tournaments. Yeah, yeah. So, so he shot in the yeah. 70s and then he shot in the 80s. Got it. And he got stung I mean, by 90 bees. 90s incredible. I can't. I it, would kill for a 90. If I get stung by bees, I go home and lay down for yes. the rest of the day. Bees yeah. are the worst. Jake, I go to the hospital. If you got stung by bees, are you allergic, Jake? Yes. Not that I know of. Yeah. Have you're you you're, never been stung? You're 100 allergic. <laughs> I think I've gotten bitten by one, stung by one before. You oh, definitely oh, haven't man. gotten stung if you still think it's like got bit by a bee. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't smoke make bees docile though? I think so. Jared Smith, just smoke them out. Hey bees, you want the pipe? Yep. No, that was a different pipe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the not the smoking pipe. Uh, Hank, are you looking it up? Yeah, it's a, uh, eighty-three and then a seventy-eight. I don't know what he shot today, but that's twelve over and seven over. Got it. Yeah, I mean, that's, pretty good. Yeah, I that's would, what I'm I would take the ninety. Those are, take the 90. those are really good scores. And there's golf hardos being like J.R. J.R. Smith shouldn't even be out there competing. He's only competing because of his name. No, nope. yeah. I'm rooting for J.R. Smith. Um, all right, my hot seat is uh, all of us because we're living in a complete simulation. If you have missed anything, uh, our colleague White Sox Dave 
friend of mine for a very long time, diehard White Sox fan. Got uh, he's basically owned outside of John Gruden owned the internet the last couple days because he went up to John Cusack outside of the White Sox game uh, three and accused John Cusack of rooting for both the Cubs and the White Sox, which he does, which mm-hmm. is bullshit. White Sox Dave then and got... And this was something that... So this is something that White Sox Dave had been saying say, online he's for He's got a years. banned list. So when he saw yes. John Cusack, he took the opportunity to go tell him what he's been saying online for a long time. And the story, too, is John Cusack, like, he will call up and ask for the best possible tickets whenever either team is in the playoffs. And it's like, that's, you know, you can't do that. I agree with this premise, by yes. the way. You, if, if you are a diehard fan of one team from your hometown... You can't be a diehard fan of the equal and opposite team right. from that hometown. Right. You don't see Mets Yankees fans walking around. That just doesn't exist. What are you gonna say, Billy? You can kind of root for the Giants if you're a Jet you fan. Or no, Jets. you can't. No, no. But you, like, if it's an if it's an out of league game. No, I so don't. Like think when the can. Giants were playing the Washington Football Team, I could kind of be like, okay, I'll, I'll root for the Giants. But I even that is like you just not, can't like that's wear not being the a gear. Fan. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, that's I, not being a fan. I have a game to game switch that I put on. Like if I'm watching a yeah. team on national television, even before I started gambling on football, I'd be watching a game. I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I hope the Cardinals win this game. Right. You know, just because like you develop mini crushes on teams. Right. The um, perfect example Saturday night. If you're uh, Vol, don't listen to the next thing I'm about to say. Saturday night, Vol for life because I I won two national championships. At Tennessee. Oh, I'll that's be, awesome. Yeah. I'll be, <laughs> thanks, Peyton. I'll be wearing a Tennessee sweatshirt. I'm not a Tennessee fan. Like, I'm not. It doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not walking away from it being like, win or lose. Oh, fuck. The you want of, certain teams to win yeah, the game. Yeah, that game. But you I don't. It but doesn't you, affect me. If like, if Wisconsin plays Tennessee, there's not a question. Yeah. If you're John Cusack and you grew up in Chicago. He grew up in Chicago, yeah. right? So he grew up like, I don't know, like, like bleeding the Sears Tower and nutting mustard. He's a guy that should only be able to pick one of those two teams. Correct. Correct. And he picked both. And then after the yeah, interaction, the part, so the yeah. video went viral, or like viral-ish, in the Barcel world, but then it actually kind of took on a life of its own. John Cusack, after the game, which the White Sox won, this was this was after we recorded, so I was yes. like, I was keeping up on this like as I was editing, and John Cusack probably sent, I don't know, 40 tweets just 20, going at White Sox, Dave. 24 hours of just tweeting nonstop. Yeah, just like, just... He was heated. There was people taking his side, people against them, and he was just replying to them all, calling what, what do you call White Sox Dave a foul little boy? Foul little boy. <laughs> his insults for White Sox Dave were like on That's brand a clean and just so yeah. funny. He also used he the said phrase, he had like shitty breath. He also used the phrase cell phone, yep. which really confused everything. It, yep. Yeah, it wasn't cell phone, it was and self- it wasn't self own. It yeah. was self phone. Phone. I was going to say, me and Hank, as both bad grammar guys, I couldn't read, like, half of his yeah, tweets. No, he's, like, the he's way that he types off. is unbelievable. And I love High Fidelity as a movie, so I just want to say that. Separate the art from the artist. Yeah, another, the art, fuck him. The artist, or sorry, the artist, fuck him. The art, great. Another thing where it's like, the people people on the internet are just way too harsh. There's people being like, John Cusack's a nobody, he hasn't been a good actor. He's in awesome movies. Yes. Like, if you're an, if you if you fancied yourself an actor and you had his career, like, you had a successful career. I'll put it right. this way. The man was in Con Air. Right. Yes. Best movie ever made. Yes. So, anyway, all of us, we're all in a simulation because not only is John Cusack fighting with White Sox Dave, now Edward Snowden has, has chimed in, and I'm scared for all of our lives, and the whole thing is just so hilariously barstool and ridiculous like there's people who are actually mad at white Sox dave and saying that we're you know he's a mouth breather and all this shit it's like dude it's a ban list vanna white is on the list because they had an insult question on uh wheel of fortune vanna white doesn't make the questions he put vanna white he has the weather on there he bans someone both in this life and the afterlife if you read that list and you think it's real like you think it's actually like this guy's actually telling people they can't root for the White Sox, your fucking your brain is rotted. Well also And I guess John Cusack is in that case. Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza. Pizza. But with jo- in the case of John Cusack, I think they didn't deliver a pizza to a girl that White Sox Dave like <laughs> That's what the list is. Yeah. Yeah. For. In the case of John Cusack, I actually think that White Sox Dave is trying to say you're not allowed to root for both teams, which I yes. agree with, by yes. the way. Yes. Uh, but yeah. But the, it's also like John Cusack also knew who White Sox Dave was. You could see it when he walked up and was like, you're on my band list. He knew. Yeah. He so knew right away. John Cusack, I think he spends a lot of time online. A lot. I was blocked by John Cusack when I looked on Sunday oh, night. Wow. I think that he blocked everybody that White Sox Dave follows. Interesting. I'm still, I'm still, I still got access. 
Yeah. He also tagged the tag teaming, like the fact that it, it was him and Patricia Arquette. Oh, it's incredible. It was like his, it's his the partner. whole thing makes no sense and it's absurd and it's it's fantastic. I tried to correct P Patricia Arquette's grammar because she used the wrong your, which is a big pet peeve of mine. Right. And so I replied to her and then she wrote back. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Dyslexia is in my bio. Oh, no. Tried to dyslexia. You got ableist. I, I, she tried to dyslexia, Shamey. I felt bad for a second. I clicked on her bio. She doesn't have dyslexic oh, in her she bio. Got you. She got She rickrolled you. She did. Well, yeah. you can't. I think that she's appropriating dyslexic culture yeah. by telling people she's dyslexic when the rules clearly state that you have to say that you're dyslexic in your bio. Yes. I saw a tweet, Big Cat. Do you know if, if is he really going on Rogan? Who? White Sox Dave. No. All right, that's what I... <laughs> what? Well, the, she, uh, Carl said, I don't... Listen, <laughs> we're, you're talking about how we're living in a simulation. Uh -huh. I didn't believe it, but also when I saw it, I had to, like, you know, weigh out the options. They're talking about... Edward. Once Edward Snowden gets involved... That's true. Yeah. Okay, Rogan yeah, becomes a lot right, more you're believable. Right, you're right. You're right. I'm on whatever side Edward Snowden's on. Yeah, they. you're, you're actually right that, that that then does change it a little bit, but... No, I, I, that, that would really be the end of times. White Sox team was getting interviewed on Joe Rogan. All right, my cool throne is uh, Brian Laundry for now because Dog has an injured ankle. Just so, one or, did, or both sprained? Maybe both. Very, very severe sprain. Almost a break. Um, what? I was going to put him on my hot seat. Oh, who? Dog. No. No, Brian no, Laundry is temporarily cool. It's throw. all how you frame the story. Nah, dude. What do you mean? I think that was kind of chicken shit. Okay. Really? Cut his mic. Jake, what's your hot seat cool throw? My hot seat is Chipper Jones. Yeah. He was sitting behind the plate in the Braves Brewers game and just dropped a foul ball. So, yeah. Past his prime, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And then my cool throw. I like the Braves, by the way. Yeah. I think, I, I, think, I think I'm rooting. I have a little crush on the Braves. Got it. This postseason. I'm just still rooting for Chris Bryant, Kyle Schwarber, and Jock Peterson's back. My yep. cool throw October. Yeah. is Zach Hample. Yes. You guys call him foul ball guy, but last night he is home run Double. guy. Double. Two home runs caught in the game. He tweeted out the stat. The seventh time he snagged two or more home run balls during one MLB game. He got three once in 2018. Fenway is the 18th different stadium in which he's gotten a home run. Also okay. first postseason ball he's ever caught. Oh, was it? Yeah. So, it, so did Zach tweet that two out? Two of them. He did, yes. Okay, yeah. I was about to say, a lot of people would be like, hey, Zach, that's not a real stat. You're just making this up. You could say anything. No, no. When it's Zach Hample and the meticulous records that he keeps of his foul balls. Mm -hmm. The real numbers. He, Those are the official. He's basically Elias Sports Bureau for people that have caught yes. balls at Major League Baseball. I love stadiums. how he wears the neon, too, so you know it's him. Oh, the, oh the, that's a coincidence. The he Ray, doesn't do that for the attention. <laughs> the Rays home run was hit directly at him. He, he didn't, didn't have to raise? move. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he right to, to him. It was crazy. And then the other one, the Red Sox, you just saw him moving with the neon yes. across the screen. So yes. good for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. good for yeah. him. Uh, Billy, would you like to try again? You have weird allegiances. <laughs> <laughs> you think that, what, justice, the law, is a weird allegiance? Uh, never mind. What? We won't talk about that anymore. No, what? My cool Dog? thing. Dog? Well, go ahead. I think, I think it's kind of chicken shit. He pulled out. He got injured. He can barely walk. He can walk. No. There's pictures he, of him without no, a brace. No, I saw or that. How do you know when those pictures yeah, were taken? You don't know. So, I look. I'm just saying. I think he just ran out of money searching. I've I saw a picture and it looked like Saquon Barkley's ankle. Don't make also, me drop this bit, Billy. You, please. You know what? This I think? Is, you know, Rosillo's been texting me. He actually hates dog, and he was like, "I think he's doing it all for clout." And I was like, "No way, dude." <laughs> how how are people? I don't want to have to drop this, please. Okay. Okay. Dog's gonna find him. He, that's what he does. Dog th hunts people. I actually think it's a possibility that dog went down to Florida, found him. Yeah. And then choked yeah. him out. Yeah. Strangled him, put him in the swamp. No, and that then garden. He's a swamp. No, 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 no. Swamp. No, listen. He put people, him in the swamp. People oh, yeah, think that, that Brian Laundry's living in a bunker in his parents' garden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But that is that in Florida? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever happened, dog showed up, found the kid. Choked him to death. Uh huh. Sprained his ankle during the melee. Zip tied him. But dog got the best of him. Threw him into the swamp. He's gator food now. Now dog leaves town. And he's like, sorry, got an am I Got a little tweaked ankle. You know how it goes, bro. Yeah. And so everyone's like, yeah, we get it, dog. 
uh, I guess you're kind of a pussy now. And meanwhile, Dog doesn't even have to tell everybody, but he gets to live the rest of his the life justice. knowing that justice has been served. He took the handkerchief off of Brian Laundrie's body, and he sniffs it every now and then just to get that high of killing a man. Yep. So don't let don't make us don't make us drop. This. I got really excited. If he if he goes back. He's oh, he'll be back, back, bro. If he goes back, if he's just taking a break, he'll be back. But if he When his ankle gets better, and it might take a few years, he'll be back. And guess what? If Brian Laundry gets caught right now, it's because dog smoked him out. So that's an assist. Hmm. Fact. Uh cool throw <laughs> Neptism Zaire Wade uh, signed with the Salt Lake City Stars, who are his father's G League affiliate team. Oh, nice. Uh, that's quite a coincidence. That's crazy that they that's scouted huge. all those players. And that Dwayne Wade's son nepotism. was the one. Yeah, that's yeah. Come on. No, I. But he's he's probably pretty good. Yeah, he's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Like Is he? He's gonna like you can't. He's not gonna nepotism his way to the NBA. He's, that would be like saying like Jack Collinsworth got his job because he's Chris Collinsworth's son, not because he's sick at his fucking job. That's not a physically act. Like you don't have to physically perform every weekend. No, Jack Collinsworth is like he's, one of the best five broadcasters in America. Right. That's that's just pure talent. Uh, also, Cool Throne rule changes. Deuce Gruden got his job on pure talent, too. Yeah, don't well, he's, he's a powerlifting don't you guys, champion. I feel like this room is turning it. on me and PFT. I he's, don't he's like a powerlifting it. First you come champion. for Dog, now you come for Deuce Gruden. Yep. Deuce is a powerlifting champion. This is bullshit. Belarus. If it wasn't for Sir. nepotism, we never would have caught Saddam Hussein. Fact. That is a fact. Sure. Nepotism contributes many great things. Jesus Christ was a great example of nepotism. Oh, he just happened to be God's son. Oh, you think he became savior based on his merits? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually did, and also nepotism. Mm -hmm. Okay, carry on. I'm good. You sure, bro? You want to go with Christ real quick? Maybe? I'm Maybe scraping the Christ? bottom of the barrel Maybe you want to go on with Christ real quick? You want me? You go with Christ. Do you want me to do you another smoke one? Ice? So in the Atlantic League, they're putting in a new I, rule change. I just had a great idea, by the way, for, for an alternate broadcast to the Manning cast. <laughs> it's Jay and John Gruden and Deuce. Oh. And they're just they're just watching Chappelle's show and laughing a little too hard at yeah, the jokes. Yeah, laughing, yeah. Also, fuck it. ESPN. They're just pretending like he wasn't an employee there for like 10 years. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. He was, just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Uh, what, 2017? What yeah, happened? So, what, any, any shows get canceled? He was year? there. In 2017. Yes. Yep. Just want to <laughs> double check that. Have you, right. Pickett, have you ever? Uh, uh, just 2017. interesting that. 2017. Got it. Interesting, interesting that he was there. Uh, all right. Let's get to our interview. We've got Booger McFarlane. We'll talk some more football. Uh, PFT, before we do that, you got a word. Yeah. Before we get to Booger, I want to talk to you guys about our great friends over at Cross Country Mortgage. Cross Country Mortgage is a lot like us at Barstool. They're a people first group of people, they're dedicated to the fundamentals of mortgage lending which results in a fast, convenient, and less stressful home financing or refinancing experience. I bought a house a while ago, back when I lived in Texas, and I'll tell you what, going through all the paperwork, doing all the stuff behind the scenes, the red tape was a big time pain in the butt. I hated every minute of it. It's stressful, you don't know if you're gonna be accepted for different things. There's just so many details that you have to worry about when it comes to getting a mortgage, but at Cross Country Mortgage, they handle all that stuff so you don't have to. They make it super simple to figure out how much you can save on a monthly basis and over the life of your loan. The numbers can be staggering and you don't know how much you can save unless you actually talk to an expert, figure it out. So you can learn more about your refinance and connect with your team at Cross Country Mortgage. They're going to make the process as painless and as simple as possible if you're choosing to refinance or if you're trying to be a first time home buyer, they're going to help you out, walk you through the process, save you a, little, a lot of time, effort, Rates are at all-time lows. They might not get this low again, so you should call today. Get a fast, free quote. They can save you a lot of money if you go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash barstool. Learn more about your future home buying experience or refinancing your current mortgage. Go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash barstool. Cross Country Mortgage LLC, NMLS, 3029. All loans subject to underwriting approval. www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Now here is Booger McFarland. Okay, we now welcome on our good friend, recurring guest. It is Booger McFarland talking a little ball, college football, and NFL. Uh, Booger, always great to have you on. I wanted to start, though, with a question. Uh, I, I saw we were watching Monday Night Football, uh, Colts versus Ravens. Can you talk me through the green suit that you wore? Because it was um, it was an interesting suit. So that that you you pulled that off, but it was an interesting suit. 
Well, first and foremost, let's define interesting. I've never known you to mint your word, so go ahead and say what you really want to say. Uh, it was somewhere between a Masters champion and also the guy who valets the cars at Augusta. I couldn't figure out which one. Well, I prefer Masters champion, but I only want to get that when I actually win the Masters. And since I'm a golfer, that that is that is sacred and that is a very hollow statement. So I appreciate that you would even go there. Uh, never, ever confuse me with a valet driver of any sort, whether it is one that's wearing a black jacket or a green jacket. Um, I wouldn't expect you to know fashion. OK, <laughs> so l last night was really about fashion and about me being able to make a statement. Sure. I could continue to wear your normal gray, black, brown suit. But listen, who wants to watch that? Who, who wants to look on the screen and see a, a nice looking brother in a suit that just blends into the set? Sometimes you try to make a fashion statement and let America know that, guess what? Books have a little fashion too. I've graduated from the guy that used to wear 34 Huskies in the fifth grade, okay? So things are a little different now. Okay, all right, so that's fair. I mean, I, I like the bold choice because you know what? I'm talking about it right now. It was a memorable thing. I, I when you when they went to halftime, I was like, "Whoa, Booger, Booger went for it. He <laughs> Booger, went for it. Booger can pull it off. I would like to see Adam Schefter show up in like an orange suit one time. <laughs> you think he even has that in his closet? You think he's got anything? He probably just has one suit and it's the same suit, just like ten different pairs of it. I, I would agree. I think Schefter probably has fifty four blue and black suits, and he just kind of mixes them up. And and when he wants to spice it up, he goes with a little gray. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's like a, a funky red tie. Yes. My tie has hey, a, a stripe hey. on it. Yes. Allow the tie to accentuate everything. Tie in the, in the pocket square. Yep. Uh, all right, so so let's talk NFL first, and we'll do some college football. Um, yep. The big story coming out of week five in terms of uh, teams here, are the Kansas City Chiefs broken, and how, what's your level of concern on how bad they are at defense, and can they put this back together? Are they broken? Yes, they're broken right now. Is it fixable? Yes. Uh, is it going to take a while? Absolutely. So let's kind of break that down a little bit. Uh, I think the quarterback's not playing well, and we can make excuses for the reasons why, but the bottom line is, you know, he's a half a billion dollar quarterback who's not taking care of the football. He's already thrown as many interceptions this year as he did all of last year, so I think he's got to take care and value the ball a little bit better. I think he's become a little bit enamored with – some of the magical things that we've seen him do, i.e. the no-look passes, uh, leaving the pocket, throwing off of one foot. Uh, sometimes the simplest thing to do is just to look at the guy and throw it to him. And I think Patrick Mahomes, and he'll tell you himself, he's fallen victim to the da 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 that type of play. And so he's got to get back to just playing good, solid football. Um, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, those guys are two of the best at their position. I think they'll be fine. They put a lot of money in this offensive line. The offensive line will be really, really cool. Uh, I think they'll be fine. Their defense is, is absolutely poo-poo. So, yeah, okay? let, yeah, let me ask you a, a quick follow-up on their defense because I should have said this to begin with. I, I'm always yeah, that's interested. Yeah, that, that's a bad job of interviewing by you. Yeah, you no, no. Have, you should have asked one question and then set up the next question. Well, no, here's – no, that's not why I did that because I, I respect you, Booger. I know you can hold two thoughts in your head at the same time. So that was a good initial question. It didn't go in enough detail in this respect. You were part of a defense, the 2006 Indiana, Indianapolis Colts. Unfortunately, they beat my Bears in the Super Bowl. But you were part of a defense Sexy that Rexy. all regular season was bad. You guys were not a good defense. And then you, towards the end of the season, figured it out, put it together, played – good enough defense to win the Super Bowl. Is that something that can be replicated, or is it like that was a once in a million, you know, the defense was just it, it needed everything to get better, and then it got better all of a sudden? Or can like can the Chiefs do that? I don't think they can, but can they? Someone who's actually seen it firsthand, a team kind of flip the switch defensively. Well, I, I give them a better opportunity than we did. So we didn't really change a lot. Once I got traded to Indianapolis, that was kind of the personnel that we had, and we just had to get better. You know, people would often ask Tony Dungy, hey, what are you going to do to fix the defense? And he said, he simply said, hey, nothing. Guys got to do their job. Like, we're professionals. Guys got to go out and actually do their job better. And, you know, thankful for the people in, in uh, Indianapolis, we did that. Uh, defensive football, Big Cat, is, is not necessarily about, like, X's and O's. Playing defense is about hustle. It's about effort. And it's about hitting people. Like, as long as 11 people are doing that, we can stop people. It, it really doesn't matter from a scheme standpoint, having a great scheme. It's about relentless effort and flying to the ball 
prime example, look at the Cowboys. What's really different with the Cowboys this year other than Micah Parsons? It's the same dudes. Like, it's the same guys. You change the coordinator, and all Dan Quinn has done is really simple. Hey, guys, we're going to play with relentless effort, okay? Run to the ball, hit somebody, make something happen, and play to the whistle. I let everybody do their job. Now, you bring it back to the Chiefs. I think they can do it and do it at a higher level because if you look at the other night, Chris Jones didn't play. Frank Clark is coming off of, uh, of an injury. They're missing, uh, I think it's Traverius Ward, one of the corners. So all their pieces are not there yet. And so when all their pieces get back, Spagnolo is always going to be a, a risk taker on defense. So they're never going to be the Baltimore Ravens or the Buccaneers. They're going to be a team that gives up some plays, but they're going to make some also. The problem is right now they're not making any plays, uh, you know, turnovers, uh, pick sixes, sacks. They're not doing it. Like they only have like six sacks on the year. That's terrible when you have two guys that are making $20 million up front and Frank Clark and Chris Jones. So I think they can get it done. It's going to take a while. First and foremost, they got to get healthy. If they do that, I do think that they can make a run, but they are a bad football team right now. Yeah, on the defensive side, it's interesting that, that Big Cap brought up that Colts team because they had a safety, Bob Sanders, right, that yeah. that flipped that switch. He's similar to the Honey Badger in a lot of ways in that they're always around the football. I think Tyran Matthew, he's he's faster, I think, overall. Yep. He's better in coverage, but they yep. still have that knack for getting to the football, causing a lot of fumbles, picking up a fumble, taking it back. Um, there are elements that definitely match up with those two teams. And as far as Patrick Mahomes goes, I think what you're touching on, we've been saying this, uh, we've kind of been squatting on this take for the last two years. He gets too cute with it sometimes. Sometimes yes, too yes. cute. I love that saying that he gets too cute. Uh, and so he needs to just, you're saying he needs to just go back to fundamentals, uh, lock in on a receiver, go through your progressions, just play quarterback like a normal way. And I actually think that the Chiefs will be fine by the end of the year. They'll manage to figure all this stuff out that we're talking about. And they'll probably end up as, you know, a, a three seed in the playoffs or something like that. I just think that he's too good to go the entire year committing all these turnovers and running these issues. Well, I completely agree. It's kind of like Big Cat. You know, he, he goes on these diets sometimes, mm -hmm. but he's like his 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 level of fat in his body is just too high for him to stay on. It. Like <laughs> it, it, it never it will never last. At some point, he's going to Big Cat and he, he's going to continue to. Yep. I don't know whether it's, it's the donuts or it's the double cheeseburgers or what it is, but he can go on a diet for six days. That seventh day. He's gonna intake so many calories that his body is just gonna start rejecting some of them. Yes. Water always finds its level. You know what it is. There I, you go. There what, you go. During a season, during a football season, when you played uh, in the NFL, like your body gets banged up during the season. Guys go through injuries. You're hurt, not injured. I during the football season, I am constantly, you know, battling week to week, trying to make it through the weeks, and sometimes, it, you know, it falls apart. That's I'm no different than than a guy who has two Super Bowl rings. We're the same, Booger. Oh, we – there's nothing about us except we both have two arms and two legs that's the same. Other than that, that is it, my friend. No, we're the same. We're the same. Uh, Booger, I, I have a question for you because I randomly – I got YouTube algorithm last week where they just, like, force a video down my throat, and the one yeah. that popped up – was the old Monday night football game of the Colts and the Bucks, the one where you were on the Bucks at the time, and yep. the Colts got out to that, or the Colts had a, a massive deficit in the fourth quarter. I think it was the biggest fourth quarter comeback in the history of Monday yep. night football. Uh, and it went to overtime. They had that missed field goal followed up by the doink that went in with Vanderjack. You were on that, on that field goal block team when they called, was it Simeon Rice for leaping? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do you remember going back and watching? Do you do you know what the refs called in that game? Is that an actual penalty to jump in the air? No, I don't think the penalty. First of all, um, thanks for bringing that up. I, I somehow I've forgotten about all time all that, bad but, defensive performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't quite go that far. All time choke much, job. But, yeah. Okay. I, I, I can think of a couple more. <laughs> well, I, okay. I'm not I've even. I've never go choked there. that bad on Monday Night Football. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, hey, I get your point. All right. Yep. Um, it's one of those calls, man, where I, I think when they called it in the moment, we were like, huh, what? Is that a penalty? And then when you go back and you open the rule book and you turn to page 179 and you look under dash four, there it is. Like, it's one of those rules nobody ever knows, nobody ever looks up. And it's, it, it's very similar to the double punt the other night. Remember? Mm -hmm. uh, I forget what game that was. Was it Thursday night football where there was a double punt and nobody yep. knew the rules? Yep. Very similar to that. 
Yeah, that was. It was just kind of an embarrassing moment for you personally. I would have to imagine. Yes. How well, much were you guys really. up I mean, by? Uh, I think we were up thirty-one. Maybe 30, 30, 35 or thirty-one. It was like 30, 35, three, 31, three, something like that. Wow. And you lost. It, well, Peyton Manning was on the other side. Oh, okay. Um, can I talk quarterbacks real quick? So we got a- absolutely. So let's let's take out Brady. Let's take out Mahomes, uh-huh. Rogers, and say Josh Allen. Who's who's the quarterback you think is playing the best right this second that you take on your team? Justin Herbert. There it is. I, yeah, I don't think it's close. And I said this the other day, guys, and you tell me if you guys um, buy into this. I think we were all victims of that um, of his personality coming out. Remember when he came out of the draft, everyone said, well, he wasn't a captain. He wasn't a leader. He was kind of an introvert. He didn't talk a lot. He wanted to go back to Eugene and stay, p- p- play another year. Because remember, he didn't come out early. Yeah. He, he had the chance to come out early, but he went back to school. And so we paid so much attention to his personality that we overlooked his talent. And the Miami Dolphins did so much that they took Tua in front of him. How about them apples? Yeah. yeah For no, me, it was the hair. When it, when they cut his hair, I was like, he's lost all his powers. And then it, he spent the last year growing it back out. It's nice and shaggy. It's not too long like Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, but it is. It's a good point, Booger, because it's actually cr- it's crazy when you look at quarterbacks. And right. if they stay longer, it's just more time to tear them down in a weird way. Whereas, like, when it's the potential is there and they come out after three years, it's like, well, they everything we can fix everything and everything looks great. I remember people were saying that because he uh, played – high school football in the shadows of Autzen Stadium in, in Eugene, Oregon, and then went to Oregon, the guy's never traveled anywhere in his life, and that was a knock against him. Like, that, yep. so, like, when you have more time, you break it down. But he's been, he's been incredible, and that uh, – so that, that Chiefs-Chargers game, we were talking about it on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think the Chargers defense in the in, – uh, sorry, the Chargers Browns game. I think the Chargers defense and the Browns defense are both very good. Is there something to be said for a game that just gets out of control, where you can't you can't judge their defense going forward on that one game where shit just went crazy and it became a shootout and like game flow was completely off the charts? Because I don't think both those defenses are, are give up five hundred yards and forty point defenses. No, but I, I do think both of those defenses, their weaknesses got exposed a little bit. Okay. Um, if you look at the Chargers defense, they couldn't stop the run. Like they had the the the, the wherewithal of, of of like two ants trying to stop the run. Like they, I mean, they just couldn't do it. And if you look at the Brown, uh, the Browns defense, I know the defensive coordinator. He's a personal friend of mine, and they've tried to build that secondary up for the last couple of years, and that secondary got exposed when Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney are not getting after the quarterback. That secondary was getting toasted. I mean, Mike Williams was running scot free to the point that. I honestly thought that the play was dead because there, there was no one around him and it was a touchdown. So to your point, sometimes it can get out of hand, but I think that was just one of those cases, man, where it was really, really um, two defenses that had bad matchups because their weaknesses were being accentuated by the other team's strength. If you follow me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. I want to ask you about the Washington football team's defense because we had Rex Ryan on a couple weeks ago and he said, that's his biggest disappointment of the season. It's my personal biggest disappointment uh, because I was relying on that team to be able to, you know, look like themselves from last year to a certain extent because they haven't really changed personnel. They haven't changed coordinators. They, in fact, added some guys on defense. Uh, but they suck. They're, they're just really, really bad right now. From your perspective as a defensive guy, is it an effort thing or is it a scheme thing? How much hope should I have for this Washington well, football team I- defense? I think it's a, it's a combination of two things. I don't think it's scheme because the same coordinator is still there. Jack Del Rio is still the defensive coordinator. So then I, I, I go to the next step. Could it be effort? Well, I see they're playing hard. Those guys are flying around. I just don't see the consistency of attention to detail. The things that make you great are often the little things. And last year, that defensive line was dominant. This year, it hasn't been. Last year, they were creating turnovers. This year, they're not. Last year, their secondary was pretty good. I think they added, uh, is it Jackson? J.C. Jackson, maybe? The, the, the corner? Yeah, they got the corner, they, and they got Landon Collins back, who is... Yeah, so... Yeah, he, he was supposed to be good, but he's like, he's been pretty bad to the point where people right. are saying, 
maybe he should just switch positions to linebacker. And that's that's never a good sign when people are like, your safety is so slow, but he could be a really good small linebacker. Well, listen, that's kind of like Big Cat. If Big Cat were to play football, he would probably start out at fullback, and then they'd be like, you know what? This running thing is a little tough. Let's just move him to guard or mm-hmm. center. Mm-hmm. So eventually, eventually, that's where you get to. So, again, you and I are very similar. We can – we can morph into different positions, even though you may want to be a fullback. I think eventually you settle in at left guard, maybe a right guard. Because left guard is more athletic. You you'd be kind of a right guard. Mm-hmm. That's, that's this what feels I think. That's personal what I think now, Booger. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, it's, no, it's not. You're it projecting because Booger Booger struggles it's with reality. his weight, so he's projecting. I'll take it. I'll I'll no, I'll carry it for you. I, I don't struggle with it. I just like to eat. <laughs> uh, where where do you land on um, the starting rookie quarterbacks? Like the the debate obviously raged when Justin Fields was not being played. Trey Lance has looked not great, but he's you know had to play for Jimmy Garoppolo because he got injured. Do you think there's a like? Are you one of those guys like, hey, you could ruin a starting quarterback, or if they're the guy, they're going to be the guy, and you should play them right away. Uh, I think you play a guy when he's ready. I, I don't believe in putting the guy out there and just throwing him to the wolves. I, I think there's a lot of uh, kids that are growing up nowadays that are mentally soft. And if you run into a mentally soft quarterback, yeah, maybe you could uh, not necessarily ruin them, but, but you, you would get them in a bad mental state or a bad frame of mind. As you look at these quarterbacks here, Trevor Lawrence, I think is super athletic. I think he's going to be fine as long as he can keep Urban Meyer on the plane and coming back to Jacksonville and uh, he, he stays invested, I think Trevor will be fine. Zach Wilson, uh, his talent is really, 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 really off the charts. He can make all the throws. I just think he's got to get used to doing the simple things. Like, he's got to get used to coming to work, taking the time card, clocking in, and going to work. Like, he doesn't need to come to work with the shades on and, and the designer jacket. He's just got to get used to doing the small things. And if he does that, I think he'll be good. Um Matt Jones, listen, Mac is in a really, really good situation. I love Mac Jones. I love what Mac is doing. Uh, I think Mac is going to wind up being a really, really good quarterback. He'll make some Pro Bowls. He'll be really good for a long time. Justin Fields, uh, I'm not a believer in Matt Nagy. Um, I, I think Matt Agreed. Nagy. Preach. You know, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not a believer in, in what, what he's done. I thought Mitch Trubisky was a quarterback that had a lot of talent, uh, but he just wasn't used in the proper way. Uh, Trey Lance is not ready. And what I mean by not ready, let me define that. The objectivity of playing that position or the prerequisite, you got to make really good decisions. You got to take care of the football and you have to give your you have to give your team or put your team in the best position to win. That means you can't take sacks. That means you can't throw the football to the other team. If you watch the preseason in every game he played, he took a ton of sacks. He threw interceptable balls, even though they were not sometimes intercepted, but he threw balls that hit the DBs in the hands. So he's not ready. And if you watch the game the other day against the Cardinals, I mean, Trey Lance, I mean, he the, the first throw of the game or one of the first throws of the game, he gets picked and he throws another one clear over the guy's head. The game is moving too fast for him. Eventually, it'll slow down. And when it does, he'll be an all-pro player. So I honestly think that these guys, there is a lot of expectations based on where they pick and based on our appetite to get everything we want right now. Like, it's really not on their fault. It's our fault because – Big Cat, you being a Chicago Bear fan, you want to see Justin Fields right now because yeah. you're paying you're paying your season tickets or whatever, and you want to get your money's worth when you go to the stadium. Well, just have a little patience. Yeah. Um, you you mentioned Urban there for a second. Uh, is there any recovering of that locker room? You've been in locker rooms your entire life. You, I'm sure you've never had a coach not fly back with the team. Let's just say hypothetically Tony Dungy stayed overnight after an away game and then he was grabbing a girl's butt in a bar and getting absolutely hammered. Yeah, like something what, you may have seen. How, how does it recover? Like, how, are, those guys, <laughs> are those guys checked out of what Urban Meyer is saying for the rest of the year? Or is there any, is there any way this – because on top of it all, they're bad. But is there any way he can get back the trust in that locker room? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think Urban can. And, and, and to your point, PFT, I, I, I don't think Tony Dungy would ever do that, which is the one thing. Like, Tony didn't comment on the whole bar thing with the wife. Tony's biggest thing was, he's like, that's between you and your wife. Tony's biggest thing was, as a coach, you left your team. Yeah. Like, this whole thing about teamwork and I'm the, I'm the guy up front, I'm the leader. Like, you literally got off the plane and says, all right, guys, we lost the heartbreaker. 
hey, I'll catch you guys on the other side. Like that's mm-hmm. just something you don't see people do. Yeah. And, to, and and that's something as a player, my coach, here's the thing. Here's what's crazy. Not only did you leave, not only did you leave us, you went to the bar and you you got a female that's not your wife and she's twerking on you and, and you're like having a great time. Okay. So the very thing that you would probably get upset if we did late at night or somebody caught us in a very compromised position, here you are as a grown man married with adult daughters, you are in there and we still don't know where his right hand was. Like nobody still knows where that right hand <laughs> I've watched like, the tape. Like we don't. I've watched huh? the tape. It was it was in some places. It was uh it was doing a little uh, RPO. I'll put it that way. Uh, come on. Now, this is <laughs> this is part of my take. I, I need a little bit more than that. Uh, it was somewhere between the butthole and the vagina. It was in the gooch. Yeah. Well, listen, you said it. I'm glad you watched the tape. I didn't see it. I'll go back and look at the tape a little bit more in detail and see if I can see that. But at the end of the day, guys, as as a head coach, you just can't do that. That's yeah. the only thing I'll say. You just can't do that. Yeah. They might leave him in London. I think that would be the best possible outcome for everybody. <laughs> just don't get, don't allow him on the plane. Have him go out to the pub. Have a couple pints with some birds over there. Uh, switching gears real quick to college football. You're an LSU guy. We're LSU guys. We love yeah. Coach O. I want to preface yeah. everything I'm about to say with the fact that I, I love Coach O. Uh, he's been very good to us on this show, and he, he won a national championship. You don't have to qualify. Just go ahead and say it. You, you can't take the national championship away from him. Is he going to get fired this weekend? Um, No. I don't think he's going to get fired this weekend. I do think that the people – I'll put it this way. And I, I think this is the God honest truth. I think that the people who make those decisions in Baton Rouge, their attention is so focused solely on every Saturday throughout the rest of the season. And that's not just with the outcome of the game. That's preparation. That's his press conferences. That's everything that involves LSU football. Because, guys, I'll tell you this. In the state of Louisiana, it's LSU football number one and everything else is second. That includes the New Orleans Saints and the Pelicans, regardless of whether Zion is playing or not. It is LSU football and everything else. And so I think from a athletic standpoint, from a political standpoint, the entire state is focused on what happens and what goes on the next six or seven Saturdays. And if that doesn't change, I don't have to I don't have to tell you guys anything you don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I think we all know what eventually, if it doesn't change, what's going to happen. Yeah, it's um. It sucks. It sucks because we love Coach O, but it's also the reality of SEC football. It's the reality of a school like LSU that expects to be great year in and year out. The pressure we is – We should be great. Yeah. LSU, no, you guys LSU got the guys. should be great. Yes. Yes. I Actually, uh, on that note, so – LSU always has top recruits, you know, Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, these teams that always get the best recruits. Would you, when you're playing on a Saturday, is it that apparent when you play against a team that's like, okay, they could have a great quarterback, they could have a great coach, but when it comes down to it, they don't have dudes that are even close to our set of dudes? Yes, I I think I've played several games where, you basically say, hey, if that dude doesn't beat us, they got no shot. Right. And you know it going in. Nobody is something like nobody comes out and says it because that goes against the whole code. Because hey, we got to go out and we got to play one play at a time. You know all the coach speak, one play at a time, do your job, et cetera, et cetera. But I think in the back of everybody's mind, you know that if we're playing Wyoming and they have Josh Allen, Hey, if Josh Allen can't beat us, the other twenty-one guys that are going to step on the field have no shot. Right, right. It's just a, it's an interesting part of college football when you watch it every Saturday because in the NFL, every any given Sunday, you know, like every team has pros and any team can beat any team. Whereas in college football, even this weekend, you know, with with Alabama losing to Texas A&M, it's a shocking upset. But at the end of the day. Texas A&M has really fucking good players. You know what I mean? They have a top 10 recruiting class the last three, four years. So it's Why not- is it shocking? Jimbo told you this summer it was going to happen. And Saban replied, yeah. what, in, in golf? Yeah. But, it, but you know what I mean? Like, that's – that when you actually look at it, the recruits for each team, the talent level is not that – there's not a huge discrepancy. It's just that A&M was having a bad year and Alabama is right. Alabama. It's perception, right? I, I think we have the perception that uh, – when I hear a name, I automatically know what it's going to be like. Alabama dominant, Ohio State dominant, Georgia dominant, LA 
shoot. They could be good depending on who the quarterback is. Um, so, like, there's this there's this perception. Michigan never beat Ohio State. So, like, as soon as you say names, the perception comes in our mind, and I think that's our fault again. Yeah. Um, because you're right. If you look at the recruiting rankings, um, the teams that should be really good, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, some are good, some are not. Like, Clemson's terrible this year. And so I, I think they got the – you have to be able to – look at the team, watch how they're playing, follow how they're playing, and that'll give you a little bit of insight. But I think the parity is starting to take a little bit of shape in college football. And what I mean by that is um, I think that Penn State has raised their level of play. I think Michigan is playing well this year. Um, I'm still waiting for USC to get the right head coach. Yep. When they get the right head coach, then when USC starts rolling, then they dominate California. And USC – Oregon kind of control the West Coast. You come in the middle. It's always been Texas, Oklahoma. You go up in the kind of in the Midwest slash Northeast. It's been Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan. And then you have the SEC. That's kind of been what college football has been about. Miami, Florida State has kind of been up and down a little bit. Uh, but like generally, it's been a, like a 20 team feel for like the last 30 or 40 years. We're just, I think, slowly getting back to that point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's also interesting. I, I think the, the biggest change in college football is that guys can transfer and the transfer portal is, you know, you don't see it. Like, you actually – Penn State losing to Iowa is a perfect example. They lose their quarterback. They don't have a backup. Usually yeah. in, in a regular season, you know, 20 years ago, you have a backup who's decent. Even Caleb Williams comes in. I don't know what – what do you think Lincoln Riley's going to do – with Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler, because you don't want to lose Spencer Rattler this season. Like, he could – he probably won't, but if you name Caleb Williams a starter, Spencer Rattler could transfer – he could put himself in the transfer portal the next day, and now you are you have no depth. Well, I, I, I think where you're at right now, he's not leaving because where is he going, who has scholarships available, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, not this so year, think, but he might say, like, I'm not going to stick around and be the backup. I, I Again, he well, might not do that's it. That's cool. Right. Well, that's cool. If, if, if Spencer Rattler leaves, and I got I got a scholarship, I can go sign somebody else. But it's like this is big boy football, big cat. Like if you you don't do the job, like you lose it. I'm I'm gonna play the best guy. It's kind of like Nick Saban. Remember when Nick Saban pulled Jalen Hurts and put in Tua? Yep. All right. And Jalen Hurts kind of just sat there and he toughed it out, and he came back in the I believe in the in the SEC title game. He came back and played some. Yep. Okay. So you have to have the mental toughness as a kid to know that if, if I'm not playing well, like this is very, very similar to life. Like if I'm not doing what I need to do in life, I'm going to either be fired, demoted, and I got to look at my, look myself in the, in, in, in the mirror and say, I got to do better. Yeah. Spencer Rattler, to your point, I don't think Spencer Rattler is going to start another game at Oklahoma barring, barring injury over the next couple of years. Cause thank Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams came in and galvanized the team. So if, if Lincoln stood in front of the team and said, Hey, we're going back to Spencer. He would lose every player in there because they look at him with the side eye like, so you're going back to the dude that had us down two touchdowns or three touchdowns against Texas? Okay, all right. So now you're not about winning. You're about the agenda. Yeah. And so as a coach, you can't do that, man. You always got to be real with your team. And it, because if you don't, then you risk, the, you risk losing the confidence and the trust of your team. But, but th what I'm saying is uh, the best coaches going forward in college football will find a way to keep positional depth in an era where guys can transfer. Like Penn State, if they keep Will Levis, who starts for Kentucky and beat LSU on Saturday night, if he's Thank the you. backup for Penn State, they win that game in Iowa. I believe that. Instead, they don't have that backup, you know, and it falls apart quickly. So it's going to be interesting to see which coaches are able to, like, massage those relationships and keep guys kind of bought in even though they're not starting right away. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good point. Um I also think that that depth is going to be younger. So you're not going to get a guy who's a junior or a senior that's just going to sit there and twiddle his thumbs and listen to part of my take on Tuesday and Wednesday and go to practice and ride the bench on Saturday. Like, you're not going to get that. Will Levis we'll 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 is a and listener. He, yeah, Will Levis listens yeah. to every show and he beat LSU's Factually ass. incorrect, Booger. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, one out of 100. Okay. Say I'm wrong, all right? <laughs> uh, most, of, most of your depth, to your point, Big Cat, is going to be younger guys. So freshmen and sophomores, and that's what Nick Saban does a great job of convincing young guys to kind of sit around and wait their turn. He'll play them a little bit in, in the games against Northwest Directional State to kind of make the moms and dads and the grandparents feel good. 
But when you get into conference play, those guys don't play a whole lot. All right, what, what about Georgia's defense? Because I'm starting to think they might be one of the best defenses of, of all time. Like maybe in 20 years, we might look back and we might be like, this Georgia team is like those early 2000s Miami teams, you know, like some of the Florida State teams from, from back in the day. Do you think that this Georgia team, what we're watching right now, could be an all-time great? I think the defense is as good as we've seen on a collegiate level in a long time. Um, I think Stetson Bennett, a.k.a. the mailman at quarterback, uh, brings a level of uh, maturity and toughness to the quarterback position that JT Daniels doesn't. You know, JT, I've never seen a guy practice like on Tuesday, Wednesday, skip Thursday, didn't play Saturday. Like, like what are we doing here? Um, and so I think this is Georgia. It, it, it seems like we say, we, we say this every year. This is Georgia's best opportunity maybe to win a national championship. Like, how many times have we said that? Right. Like, yeah. in the last couple of years, we've said it a couple, like, two or three times. So, uh, their defense is legit. Their head coach is, is really, 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 really good. I played with – not with him, but I played against Kirby at Georgia. I think we're going to get one of the all-time great games when we get Georgia versus Alabama in the SEC championship game. I think it'll be outstanding, and I think it'll be one of those Saturdays that we look back and we go, Wow. Uh, there will probably be – it'll be very similar to the LSU-Alabama game that was 10-9 or 13-9 years ago where I think there were 44 draft picks on that field. Mm -hmm. I think when Georgia and Alabama face each other, potentially, I think there'll be 40 to 50 guys that go in the first four or five rounds in the NFL draft at some point. When you were playing against Kirby on the field, did you underestimate him because his name was Kirby? Uh, no, I underestimated him because if, if I'm not mistaken, Kirby played safety. And he didn't look really athletic. He looked like maybe a, a coach's son. Mm -hmm. You know, ham and eggs. Hard guy. Yeah, he's gonna be in the right. He's gonna be in the right spot. Do the right thing. He's a coach on the field. You know the whole all the stigmas. Yeah, yeah. deceptively athletic. Yes, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I just feel like people named Kirby usually get uh, underestimated in life. It's one of those names that it's hard to take seriously. But I think he's proven himself. And obviously, I think this team uh, on defense is is definitely one to watch. I do want to see them play like a explosive offense. And that's not an – I think the defense is lights out, but they have not played a, an explosive offense. And your retort could be they there aren't that many this year. But who, like – Who would who would you classify as an explosive offense? Ole Miss, offense? Alabama, oh, Ole Miss. Oh, geez. Okay. Ohio yeah. State. What? Okay. Oh, listen. Hey, big guy, listen. Uh, yeah. Alabama, yes. Ole Miss, uh, I take it you're believing Lane also? No, I think they're they, – listen – Georgia will beat Ole Miss because o o Ole Miss can't stop anyone. I'm saying, all I'm saying is the offenses that Georgia has played are not good. Clemson is a dumpster fire offensively right now. That was a, right. a win week one. We're like, oh, that's huge. Arkansas is <coughs> one-dimensional. Auburn, right. Bo Nix is trick-or-treat. I Again, I think Georgia's defense is very, very good. I just right. I can't wait till they have to play an offense that can do multiple things and do them well. Alabama, yeah, okay. like you said, the SEC championship game will be fantastic. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I would just rebut that by saying uh, Ole Miss put up, what, 14 points against Alabama, and I think that Georgia's defense is a notch above Bama's. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I just – it's more – it's not, it's less a knock on Georgia. It's more like I want to see what it looks like against a truly explosive offense, and then I'm ready to say this is an uh, – like – all-time defense from Georgia. You know what I mean? That's the okay. last piece yeah, I got for you. me. Yeah. I got you. Uh, Booger, are you, are you still in the room with Chris Berman this year while he's coming up with his nicknames? Uh, yes. Uh, he talks a little bit. Uh, he doesn't talk out aloud as much about him, but I, we are in the room together. Okay, because I remember last year we did Jalen Hurts so good. And that you got that on the Air Force, which I appreciate. Yes, that was probably yes. like what a, do we have this year. That, that was teed up for him nicely. I don't know. I was thinking two things: Justin Strawberry Fields. Mm -hmm. That's that should be an easy mm. one to to incept, mm. or uh, maybe around Christmas time with the Forty Niners, deck the halls with balls of holly. Sa la 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 la. No, with the Jets. What I said, Forty Nine. Yeah, with yes. the Jets. With the Jets. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a bit of a reach. I do like the strawberry fields one. Though. Okay, yes. that should be easy for for Boomer to hear and be like, "Oh, hey, yeah." Did you hear? <laughs> did you hear the the whoop that he let out the other night? I think it was last Monday night when he was doing the Washington football team game, where he just he screamed and you could hear it echo off the far corner of the room. Yeah, if there were cobwebs in the corner of of the studio, they there weren't after that whoop. 
Yeah, Boomer is uh, – I, I think Boomer gets a lot of pent-up frustration throughout the week. And when he comes into the, the office on Sunday, he has to let a lot of that out because usually – once we do our show, he has to record several things for Sunday and Monday and all that. And so I just think he lets a lot of it out. And if you're in the way, you're going to hear it. Yeah. All right. I had uh, one more NFL question. Uh, so give me your – you had a Super Bowl prediction preseason, but give it to me right now after week five. Week five Super Bowl prediction. I am still – I'm going to be a homer. I am going Tampa versus Buffalo. Okay. So you're not a believer in the Cardinals. Um, you know, I, there's an old saying, "Big Cat," that you got to crawl before you walk. I think they're crawling right now. I don't know if they're ready to walk just yet. Got it. Is that a height comment about they are Kyler Murray? Up. Yeah, you call him a baby. Yeah, okay, well, I mean, listen, I get it. If you want to go by the Parcells thing, that you are what your record says. Okay, they're five and zero. Oh. They're the best. If I ask you this, you tell me this. They're five and zero. Oh, they have the best record. Are they the best team in football? No, no, I agree with you. Okay, on that. so don't tell me that they're five and zero. I just said Cardinals. You know, we just shout out the Cardinals. You know, people get upset because you don't shout out the Cardinals. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. What were you saying, PFT? I was just saying that it sounded like a height comment, like you you made a baby reference to Kyler Murray and Moore because they're shorter guys. I thought that was a little bit disrespectful as a short man. As a guy who is a six foot defensive tackle. I am with the short people. Trust me. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. Yes. I, I am not. I was never one of the tallest guys. Um, you know, me, Aaron Donald, Grady Jarrett. Like we're we're among the short defensive tackle crew. And what I mean by that is none of us are six foot one at all. Mm -hmm. I I like that though. Being like you know guys like me and Aaron Donald, like maybe the <laughs> yeah. best defensive player <laughs> yeah. of all time. Right. We play the same position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he just plays a little better. Did yeah. we want to ask? He trained uh, with knives. You trained with forks and mac and cheese. Did did yes. we? Spoons. <laughs> did we want to ask quick scouting report for what's going to happen with the Raiders this week because they're interim head coach? You know, right? Yeah. So I do. Are they gonna? Is this a they rally or is it things are going to fall apart quickly here? No, I, I I do think they rally. Who do they have this week? Uh, Denver at Denver. Yeah, um, that'll be a slugfest. Um, Rich Basachi, just really, really quick about him. Um, he's a special teams coach. And what happens with your special teams coaches, they have to talk to offensive guys and defensive guys. So that's why they usually have a really, really good pulse of your team. So I think he'll have a really cool feel, a really good vibe when he walks into the meeting tomorrow about his team. He'll be able to rally the troops. Uh, I think this is the best thing for him. I don't think that having John in that locker room another day was going to be was going to be beneficial to anyone. Um, I think there's a lot of soul searching that Mark Davis had to do before they came to that decision last night. And I think Basaccia going forward, I think he'll do as good a job as you can do under the circumstances. Are they going to go 12 and 0 the rest of the season? No, but I guarantee you the team will fight. The team will fly around. Uh, he's been wanting to be a coach for a long, long time. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. All right. And I look for him to put his best foot forward. And just don't be surprised if this team uh, rallies behind Rich Passaccia. Okay. Uh, I think, Big Cat, I think we have the rowback. Oh, yep, we do. So, last question, uh, Booger. It is the rowback question. Use code uh, PFT on rowback.com for 20% off your first purchase. Rowback.com, R H O B A C K.com. Code PFT. They make the best performance Q zips and hoodies, and they just dropped new gear for the fall. For our guest today, Booger, we're going to give you a rowback performance Q zip on us. Use code PFT, rowback.com. All right, one last thing on Rich. Is he – what's his body type like? Because that's usually how I judge interim head coaches. Uh, body type as in uh, – I mean, he's not muscular like Gabe Kapler, if that's what we're thinking. Like, he's not he's not bench pressing 350 before the meeting. Is he a football um, guy? Is he a football guy yeah, in the truest sense? Absolutely. Football guy. Uh, it's hot outside. He's he's gonna walk out there with a long sleeve shirt on. Okay. You know how a football coach is dressed. Yeah. You know uh, he he's gonna have a pencil somewhere. Uh, okay. He's gonna have a, a bunch of plastic stuff hanging out around his waist. Like he's a true football guy, man. Competitive, casual. I like it. Yes. Yeah, very. Uh, uh, that's a great way to put it. Okay. That's, he... that's probably your that's probably your best contribution in the last half hour. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Will Morgan. he cry for his team like Dan Campbell, which I love to see. That was. If you're on the Lions, are you like that's those are good tears? He cares. Yeah. So there's there's probably a couple of different camps that the team falls in. One, 
some guys be like, man, what in the hell is wrong with him? Like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? And then you got the sentimental crowd that's like, hey, man, hey, our coach cares. We're like, I'll run through a wall for him. And then you got the other guys that are like, okay, I get it. I'm not sure if I'd cry about it, but uh, okay, it's cool. So just depending on which camp you fall into, I think that the players fall into one of those three camps. Okay. And Rich, would he cry if – if given the correct football situation, because this is important stuff for betting. Like when you get a chance um, at an interim head coach, it's 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 very very crucial to nail what type of personality they have and and whether or not you're going to bet on their team. Here's what I'll say, and and I think this will this will answer your question. If I had to go in a foxhole, and it's only me and about four or five people, and you told me I could go all around the NFL and pick from head coaches and assistant coaches. I'm taking Dan Campbell. Okay. All right. I'm taking um, taking Rich Basaccia. Yep. I'm taking. I'm trying to go through the list. I'm taking. Uh, I'm taking Sean McDermott. Okay. I got to get me a high energy guy. I'm getting Sean McVay. Hank is getting mad because you haven't said Bill Belichick. Not getting. What the hell is he gonna do? Um, he's a fucking figure general. out a way to get you out. <laughs> yeah, Hank is. His uh, dad was in the more navy. And more mad. The great, down this right? Okay. And then lastly, let me see who I'm gonna get. I, I got. What is fucking right. McDermott? What about do? what about a- Andy Reid? Yeah. And, Andy Reid. Andy Reid. Or can I maybe say maybe Matt Nagy and you have him run out so everyone sees the fire going <laughs> one way and then you can sneak out the other way? No. So basically, you want Matt Nagy. To- to, to kind of lay down some uh, some cover fire. Yeah, some, you know, he suppressing. runs out, and then we just get out of the foxhole and, and, and retreat. <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying to think. Who, who else would it be? What about Urban Meyer? Oh. He'd be like, no. where, where the well, bitches at? You know what? I, I'm not going to put Urban Meyer, because Urban Meyer just gets sick and stay in the hole. I need somebody <laughs> that's actually going to fight. Yes. Okay? Yes. Remember the old line coach from Cleveland? The one that was on hard knocks? Bob Wiley. Yeah. What? Yes, Bob Wiley. Okay. I, I, I need cover. I need cover. I like that. Human warmth. He's also a magician and a pilot. So that's really, he's like a Swiss army knife of an individual. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But back to the original point, Basaccia would be in there because he's a tough SOB. Uh, I got to know him a long time. Uh, I know his son. He's a football guy through and through. Uh, The reason I think people don't realize this, but the reason why him and John were so close is because he wasn't afraid to tell John, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's not right. You're wrong. And oftentimes when you have guys who are assistants, they just tell the head coach what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And I think the respect factor that we all have for Rich is that he wasn't afraid to tell John when he was wrong. And John must have respected it because he he was in Tampa with him and he also was in uh, Las Vegas with him. Rich yeah. should have been the IT guy then. Yeah, he should have. No, you needed used used him to then. read, proofread all the emails. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, uh, I think a lot of IT guys around America right now are getting uh, are working the next 24 hours scrubbing all kinds of servers and all kinds of stuff right now. Yeah, if you're an IT guy, now is the time to to solicit bribes from people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Booger, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Always enjoy our time with you. Um, you're the best. Anytime, man. Y'all have a good one. Take it easy, buddy. All See right. you, Booger. Thanks, Booger. Booger was brought to you by Me Undies. Are you afraid of the glow in the dark? Well, shield your eyes because the new Me Undies Halloween just dropped. They dropped dead. It's one collection that you don't want to ghost. It's this one with five new prints to turn up the terror. You should summon them before it's too late. I wear MeUndies. Every single day I'm wearing pants, I've got MeUndies on. That's just a fact of the only underwear that I own anymore. It's the best decision I ever made to go all the way with MeUndies. You don't want to mix and match. You can try MeUndies. I guarantee you like them. In fact, they've got a pretty solid guarantee. But the fact is, once you get one pair, you're going to want your entire underwear drawer to be nothing but me undies it's always a good dick day in me undies whether you're out running a killer or being abducted by aliens this halloween be comforted by the fact that your undies are sustainable and they're the softest in town their halloween line has i see you my boo tricks and treats lazy bones lazy pumpkin available in undies bralettes socks and loungewear in sizes extra small through 4xl tons of options to consider Make a decision quickly because look out, there's somebody right behind you. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. Any first-time purchasers get 15% off and free shipping. If you're not satisfied, you can return them for a full refund within 45 days. 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash take. That's MeUndies.com slash take. All right, let's wrap up. We've got... uh, 
uh, we're putting the listeners on the hot seat because the guys on chicks questions sucked. So we got to pick that up. We'll also bring back guys on checks and we'll also have uh, blue car- collar Jerry come in every now and then. So let's pick it up for our Wednesday uh, segments. So instead, we're going to do a Wednesday reading on a Monday or Monday reading on a Wednesday because we had a super fan fight. Now, Billy is the expert on this because he wrote a blog about it. So we'll have Billy chime in. But let's hop into it. Should we hop into it? This is an awesome story. All right. So the article is Chiefs fans X Factor Red Extreme respond to fight inside Arrowhead caught on video. Okay. So there's one Chiefs super fan that I think most people have seen. Right. He's the guy that wears, I think it's a cheese head that's dyed red. Correct. And it says X Factor on it, named after Dante Hall. Yep. But he is electric. He, that should be the name of the Cordero Patterson Award. Yes. The, the X, X Factor. Factor. Yes. Yes. And we should give it in every, we should give it in every sport. Yes. Yes. The X and Factor. Yeah. Politics. Yeah. News. You can give. Uh, bounty hunting. I'd actually give it to the Iowa punter. He's the okay, X, X Factor. Factor of the year. Yes. Uh, all right. Here we go. Kansas City, Missouri. For the second home game in a row, fighting in the stands of what's G-E-H-A field? I'm going to say Arrowhead Stadium. Arrowhead Stadium. It's G-E-H-A field at Arrowhead Stadium is all over social media, this time with an odd twist. Two weeks ago, it was fans brawling at the Kansas City uh, Chiefs took on the Los Angeles Chargers. This weekend, it was super fans squaring up early in the game against the Buffalo Bills. If you spent any time around the stadium on game day, you've likely heard at least one of the men involved. The man who calls himself the X Factor has been around for decades. In a Twitter video, he's seen getting knocked out by another super fan that the people in Section 129 know as Red Extreme. Now, I have a question just to start off. Are both these guys 129 guys? Because that's 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 a big issue. It looks like it. I, I actually don't think that there should be more than one super fan at any given time for any given team. Correct. There is a super fan. There aren't two different super fans. There can be other super fans, but they have to know the hierarchy. They like sh- there has to be a king. I wouldn't even call them super fans. I'd call them like, I don't know, like turbo fans. Yeah. Super fan implies that you're number one. Uh, turbo at the fan's kind of cool. Turbo fan is cool. <laughs> That's actually I'd rather be a turbo <laughs> fan. Turbo than fan a super is fan. <laughs> Turbo fan is the king of the super fans. Yeah, fuck. But the, the point remains that there needs to be an established protocol. Of who's and who, yeah. It, it sounds to me like the other guy, Red Extreme, like he, he that should... Would be, that would be Mr. Red Extreme. Mr. Red Extreme. He doesn't sound like he's a super fan to me because they, they even said he's just, he's the king of that section. Right. But I knew who X Factor was going into this weekend. Yes. Yeah, you're right. So, all right. They kicked me out of Arrowhead. First time ever X-Factor's been kicked out. Notice uh, here X-Factor is actually speaking in in the first person here. So uh, I love that. Third person. Third person. That is a true super fan thing to do. Mm -hmm. So he says, they kicked me out of Arrowhead. First time ever X-Factor's been kicked out. Ty X-Factor Routon said during an interview Monday, this is reminiscent of when Superfan and Detroit Don got kicked out for standing and cheering on defense. Mm -hmm. You can't have that. Uh, the video of the X Factor. I can I just say I don't like the fact that they're they're dead naming him in this yeah. article. Don't don't break that wall for me. Yes. They should continually refer to him as X Factor. X Factor. I don't want to know his name. Yes. It's irrelevant. The video of the X Factor. Is it the X Factor or X Factor? I always just thought it was X Factor. Because now they're using it as the X Factor. Like it's a it's, a, a it's proper the video proper of the X Factor. Falling after an apparent punch has nearly a million views on Twitter. The X Factor explained what happened from his perspective and who was involved. He's my old apprentice. I actually made him famous. God damn it, this is so good. <laughs> He's my old apprentice. He's the one who showed him the ropes of being a super fan. It's a it's a tragic story. It is. It? This is it's Rocky Five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. Come on. <laughs> All right. He's my old apprentice. I actually made him famous. You you know, gave him the name Red Extreme. I really had to dig deep for that one. <laughs> All right, what, what so I'm already the X Factor. X Factor. X, X, X. The Chiefs, U, what they red, wear, red. Uh, red Extreme. That sounds yeah, good. Red Extreme. Yeah. Okay. I think all in agreement. Yeah. I saw him come run up the stairs at me, and he had that look. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, tried to grab his jersey to stop him and talk to him. But like the movie Friday, he deboed me. <laughs> 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 one punch, and I saw stars. Then they took me to triage at Arrowhead, checked me out. I felt all right at the time, 
But then I didn't know uh, I had broke my ribs. There should not be triage for these kinds of fights. Let's <laughs> let's not act like you're he on an active, nurse's office. Active battlefield. Yeah. How many how many ribs does it sound like? Uh, well, we're gonna. There's a plot twist in here. I don't know if it gets in this story, but Billy, that's why we have Billy. But I'm gonna say five ribs. Five ribs feels like. Um, this doesn't feel like you should you should be going to a hospital. There should be a special a zoo set up. Yeah. For like, and they should have a vet, zoo an medics. actual vet. A vet yeah. should look at these guys. <laughs> Red Extreme posted a 17 minute video message uh, to his Facebook page following the incident. He blamed the X Factor for this. A cup of water was thrown and hit my wife in the back and splashed onto me. I've never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that low life son of a <laughs> bitch out was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. Holy shit, what a line. I gotta read that again. So this is Red Extreme who knocked out X Factor. I have never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that low life son of a bitch out was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Yeah. A year and a half. <laughs> Big cat. I mean, we have to get these guys for rough and rowdy, right? Uh, uh, yes. I got to just want to talk to them. No, we need to We need to have them finish what they started in yes. the ring. I think that, ju judging based off what I know so far from X Factor and Red Extreme, they won't have a problem putting on the gloves. Yeah. No, definitely not. Especially for for some, some coin. Um, my problem is it happened inside the stadium, and I never imagined in my life I would behave in that manner in the stadium. Really? Red Extreme? Really? It sounds like he's not that extreme, though. You're, you're a super fan named Red Extreme. You never thought that a, a possible fight would happen? And I saw the video. The video starts at the moment of impact, so we don't get to see anything that led up to a fight. But Red Extreme certainly, he walks away like a man that has been involved in a couple stadium fights before. Right, right. This is not, this is not old hat for him. Uh... He also accused the X Factor of being inebriated during the incident. This is Red Extreme. He says that I'm a meth addict, which I'm a cocaine addict and an alcoholic. Been clean for four years, so he did clear that up. He's not a meth addict. He's a cocaine and alcoholic. That's X Factor. That's, that's uh, X Factor. I, I, so I, I like the, the phrasing here because it said that Red Extreme also accused the X Factor of being inebriated. Then X Factor went over the top, and just so everybody knows, he said I was a meth addict. Right, but no. But I'm not. I'm actually addicted Coke to cocaine. And, and booze. So in my head, I went, he was drunk. Oh, no. Wait, meth? What? No, Coke. Yeah. But none of it. Because no, he's been sober for four years. But if, if, he's basically saying, if I weren't sober. I would have been coked up. Yeah, my, my, my drug of choice is Coke and booze, not meth. Yes. Get it right. Yep. Get it fucking right. <laughs> that is slander. Yes, it you is. You can't say that. He's like, I've never done meth. I just fucking blow lines and drink a shitload. But I haven't done it in a while. He's like, I party. Yeah. I don't do hard drugs yeah, like right, meth. Right. All right. Throughout the day, Fox 4 tried repeatedly to connect directly with Red Extreme, but we were turned down. However, after this story aired, in an interview by phone, Red Extreme stressed that anything the X Factor says should be taken with a big dose of skepticism. He also said he stepped away from the Chiefs superfan community because of the distrust and distaste for the X Factor's behavior. This is this goes deep. Like this is the whole community has been rocked. I need to well no, the community was rocked before this. No, fight I'm saying happened. it's the whole this beef that obviously it came to a head on Sunday night has broken this community apart. It's long standing, yeah. So. And again, the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. So he like stepped it away. Be the best time. I, I need to know who else is in the Chiefs super fan community. How many other super fans do they have? Because I'm, I'm starting to see a systemic issue yeah. with the Chiefs in that there's no clear leader. This Correct. is this is, there's too many Chiefs, not enough I words. Yes. And we need to know who's at the top of this one. Yes. Because of course, anytime you have just lawlessness, Lord of the Flies type stuff, you're going to have fights in your community. Yes. Um. Uh oh. Oh, no. oh, this is great breaking news. Maybe the best breaking news you could have. Field Yates just reported, following Russell Wilson's injury, the Seahawks are working out. The boat! Blake, Blake Bortles. Bortles. Yes! Let's go. yes! 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 Oh Blake. my yes. god. I love it. Also, shout out Field Yates because this could Amazing. even just not be true, but he knows that we'll all retweet I'm it. I'm in the process <laughs> of doing like, it right hey, now. That but was going to work. Blake, Blake, Blake. move. <laughs> I love it. That was a dirty move Take, by, by Field. He, know, he knows what he's doing. Take the boat out on the Puget Sound, baby. That's, yeah. Our working, okay, yeah. He knows what he did there. 
Uh, okay. I love it. Am I crazy to think that you don't bring Blake Bortles in for a workout? No. Hasn't he? You bring him in himself? to change the whole culture. You you bring him in <laughs> with a contract already signed. Yes, exactly. It's kind of insulting that Pete parking Kiro, spot there. You know what you're getting when yeah. it's yeah, Blake it's a Bortles. formality. Yes. If they sign him Sunday night, him against Big Ben. Oh, love it. Yes. Well, Gino. Oh, dude. Well, yes. They never know. No, it's Blake because Blake always kicks Big That's Ben's true. ass. He's he murdered yeah. the entire franchise. Facts. Yes. He's yes. a stealer killer. Um, okay, great breaking moves. All right, let's get back to Red Extreme and uh, the Chiefs super fan community. So, uh, Red Extreme has left the super fan community because of X Factor's behavior. We pick up here. Meanwhile, Rotten, who is X uh, X Factor. Meanwhile, X Factor said he's had a wild week, including flipping his car, but was clear about whether <laughs> he'd retire after this. Incident. So, hold on. Can I ask a quick question? Just to throw this out there. Uh He got broken ribs from getting knocked out. Yes. Not by the car. No. He was fine. Flipping a car. The car flipped. But it was the the punch. Punch that broke all of his ribs. Mm -hmm. This this is a clear case. They're going to use this. <laughs> yeah, Billy, go ahead. You, so apparently, done some investigation. A- apparently, everyone in Kansas City hates X Factor. Okay. And they think he's a- <laughs> allegedly a. This rules. Allegedly. Like uh, child molester. Oh, whoa. whoa, whoa. Okay. Allegedly. Allegedly. X Factor? No, wait. Is X Factor a child molester? Meth or head. is. Ru- no, he's no, no, never no, done no. meth. Co- he's no, coke alcohol. and booze. They th- but they Come think on, he was dude. boozed up when he rolled his car. Actually, saying, uh, you know what? But if he was coked up too, then maybe. Allegedly. Got it. The more I, the more I hear it, the more telling a reporter, I'm not a meth head. I'm a coke guy and an alcoholic. That's actually very meth-like behavior. Yeah. To but volunteer you know what? I that you don't do meth. I like to believe people okay. in life. Now, is X Factor, is he alleged to be a child molester? Or is it just, Ty Routen, who, the man behind the costume? Just Google Google Ty Routen. Okay. Uh, all right. So anyway, he, he was clear about whether he'd retire after the incident. X Factor was saying, no, this is making me stronger. You know, Jesus was persecuted. I'll come back stronger. <laughs> I, it doesn't seem like a great guy, but I love him. I actually do love him. All right. At this moment, authorities are not involved in the situation. Neither of the men involved have expressed interest in pressing charges of any kind. Two weeks ago, Jackson County prosecutors filed a variety of uh, blah, 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 blah. All right. The X Factor is planning on attending next weekend's Kansas City Chiefs game in Washington, D.C. Now, Billy, we need some background, too, because Billy also uncovered that these guys have known each other for a very long time. Very long time. There's a picture of... So basically, the Chiefs have a bunch of super fans that were in a community, and these two are just two of many others that are involved. Uh, so it turns out, uh, X-Factor's... The, the mother of X-Factor's wife... I mean, the, the mother of X-Factor's children uh, might have slept with the Red Extreme oh, 18 years ago. Whoa. Okay. Which caused the schism. And what does the mother say? The mother says, um, I got to pull it up. Okay. Wow. So here's the tweet from uh, Ty X Factor Routon. The man who knocked me out, aka, okay, it's very, very weird how he phrases it. Red Extreme is right in front of me in this photo. The feud started 18 years ago when he slept with mother of my child behind my back. He broke my hand, ankle, jaw, teeth, and four ribs and punching me at Arrowhead. And then there's a picture of them in happier, jaw, in teeth, happier times. four ribs. Guy was in a car crash a few days ago. Not on meth. Got it. I think that all checks out. No, I, also, shout out me as a doctor. I said five ribs. He said four. They're going to teach this. Close. They're going to use this as an example in law school, like five years from now, about how people should probably not talk to the press when they have pending litigating matters. Yes. So obviously, like, he could sue the guy for money for broken ribs, maybe even sue the stadium. But the fact that he just couldn't help himself, he's like, you know what? The news wants to talk to X Factor. Yeah. I'm going to talk to him. By Got the way, to. I flipped my car yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> forgot to mention so this that is part. X Factor is very. Active on Facebook. That's can we you try to book no X shit. Factor, please? He and does. Red Extreme. Maybe, maybe Sneak Attack, where we get them both on the same time. Now, well, don't tell them now. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't think they're listeners. <laughs> I, I just followed him on Twitter. This is a fucking awesome bio that he has. I am CEO of KC Superfans, Pro Football Hall of Fame Chiefs Superfan, 
world record holder for watching 70 straight hours of football. Oh, this guy. We got to interview him. We yep. got to interview gotta him. Got to have him on the show. Yep. Got to talk to him about so, that. Well, unless he's a child molester. Yeah. Well, we'll say that at the start. Like, hey, dude, are you a child molester? And if he says yes, then we'll stop the interview. That's how we should start every interview from <laughs> now on. Uh, Can't be too so clear. he says, I, this is about his accent. I love the song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Who knows how long that was yesterday? Tire marks in ditch was a mile long. I fell asleep behind the wheel going 85 miles per hour on interstate. On interstate. Thank God this Sorrento didn't have cruise control. As God took my foot off pedal at some time, I went down a huge ravine, <laughs> plowed through fence, and struck a tree right before a pond. Tree flipped my vehicle, and I woke up who knows how long after hanging upside down in my vehicle due to seatbelt. My two <laughs> passengers were ejected, and one was stuck in between windshield and dash. Thank goodness they are small guinea pigs. They had no injuries. What? <laughs> Yo, I forgot this part. I forgot this part. He's driving around with guinea pigs? <laughs> I forgot this part. Who, and the guinea pigs were fine. No, the guinea... So, X Factor raises guinea pigs. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. They had no injuries. I have a broken left hand, concussion, bruised ribs, head, back, and glass. <laughs> and he all admitted over. all this? Yeah. And then he's claiming that the punch. No, that was, a, that was a totally separate set of injuries oh, when he got punched. Oh, that's incredible. Um, and then. Yeah, the, what was the, what'd the wife say? The wife, the wife said, and we don't know if this is the wife really, but I think it is because of the reactions from him. You lie so much you can't even keep track. 18 years ago, I was just pregnant with my oldest and didn't even know you. He and I never screwed around. Take your beating that you started and fucking stop playing victim like a bitch. That's the ex-wife of X Factor. Yes. That's incredible. I don't know if they were married, but I think this the story and child. is the best. I kind of want to go down to DC and interview X Factor. Oh my God. We need to get him on the show. We have to get him on the show. If anybody yeah. out there knows how to get in touch with X Factor, it seems like it might he's, be. He's a big fan of publicity. He'll we got to get him on the show. Let's get him. He needs sure? to get on Friday's show. This is incredible. X Factor. What if he's not a John diddler? Let me check diddler. that out right now. Uh, if he's a diddler? You're going to check. Is yeah. X Factor a child molester? What would you say his name was? Tom All right. Well, let's 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 uh, wrap up we, the show. I, I want to say for legal purposes, all accusations of him being a child molester were done only by Billy. And allegedly, and Red Extreme, and Red Extreme, and Red yes. Extreme. Yes, I have nothing to do with that. Um, all right, should we do numbers and the show? I'm so excited about Blake Bortles. Ninety six. Yes. What a what a what a 16, 18. 16, 97. Six. Guinea pigs get their name because they cost a guinea at ports Can in South America. Can you turn it on. Can you we turn have on? five numbers out of play. Eighty fifty. Eight. Forty four. Eighty nine and sixteen. Oh, wait. 47. Wow, it goes from six times to seven times. Now has a two-ball lead. Whoa, <laughs> 47. I love how fun dominant. It's dominant. Wow, there were three numbers of five, 47 at six, now 47 at seven. I would like to weigh 47 and see if there's a difference wow. in weight between that ball and the others. What a beast. It's 47's 47. world. We're just living in it. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Death wait, taxes, what's the, 47. What's the yeah. number of... Guardian, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know. Do you have a animal fact? Yeah, I did. Guinea pigs are oh. called guineas because guinea they're from pigs. Guinea. They cost a guinea. I yeah. love it. at the ports. Love you guys. <laughs>